Well, there you are. Welcome, welcome to the FX 2023 range launch here on Mod 6510 Models. Welcome, and uh, how excited I am feeling today. It's like my Christmas, really, because I'm at that age now when really Christmas don't mean two sods. I'm more excited on things like FX announcing new kits or Tamiya announcing two ki uh, new kits and... Uh, as we are at this time of year, it's time for FX to give us their uh, um, selection of uh, brand new Spitfires <laughs> and <Yeah>. the like. <laughs> but um, yes, uh, we have in the chat so far, there's good, other people are going to be trickling in. I started a bit early so we could have a bit of a chat with the members here and those who are actually on the on the live chat on the right hand side. Any questions, any ideas, any predictions, any thoughts? Um, put it in the live chat and we can discuss it. So in at the moment, if I just uh, go back to this screen here, um, we have in the chat, we've got James, model officer. How are you feeling, my friend? Rough, but I'm all right. Rough. Are you all right, though, yeah? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Oh, good. you got some more colour in your face since the last time I FaceTimed you, to be fair. I did think about that when I spoke to you this morning. You've got some more colour in your face because you were looking a little bit ill <laughs> last time I spoke. So, uh, the magic of makeup, yeah. that is. Yeah, that's definitely. So, you know, I reckon uh, Dale's now uh, sitting in the chair because I know that Airfix do their launch live. So, he'll be there getting his makeup done and making that's sure the cool. sound and audio is good for his. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, of course, it's, it's all pre record. But um, yeah, it's uh, it'll be a good launch, I reckon. Hi, right, Tam. How are you, mate? You looking well? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, mate. Yeah, good. 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 Looking that's forward to um, hopefully, I'd like to see a new 109. That would be yes. nice. And then four, perhaps or uh, yeah. another G, um, maybe uh, uh, something modern like a Fat Amy or uh, um, perhaps uh, uh, an SU-57 even. That would be yeah. nice. That would be, that would be nice, yeah. And Matt for Captain VFC, who's released another video this week. How are you doing, uh, friend? I am not too bad, unless anyone from work is watching, in which case, <coughs> still not yeah. any better. <laughs> You're still not better? Oh, mate, I'll tell you what, that virus... <laughs> Oh. That virus cannot work today. Oh, I know. Yeah. It, it, it came on yeah. about half an hour before the Hornby wow. announcement. Uh, yeah. And see, it just I, doesn't I, want to go away. Oh, I know. That's <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> as I said, we've got more coming in as we carry on through. Uh, we do have a guest later on after we've seen the launch and uh, uh, discussed the, uh, the models that are going to be... Uh, um, releasing over the next 12 months. We do have an FX rep coming in to speak to us, which will be good. Um, you can all guess who it is, but uh, mm. yeah, it's uh, Brooke. Um, it, it's going to be good. Yeah, Brooke, yeah. <laughs> um, in the chat so far, we've got the regulars, which is really good. We've got Mark Shelland, he's in the chat. Hamish, how are you feeling, mate? If you're feeling better, you can come up and chat with us because you were here last year. Um, because remember, we do this every year. We did it last year, and it went really, really well. Um, I was a bit worried that I'll get copyrighted, but um, uh, fortunately, FX uh, saw that the benefit of us uh, talking about these kits. And they've even um, retweeted my tweet today to share that we're going to be on from 3.30. Um, Fueled Funny you, just le left, left a really nice comment. On a serious note, Moz and the team from the weekly chill sessions, thank you for all your content. Having only just got back into modelling, Airfix and Chill have been essential viewing. I don't know which Airfix and Chill, chill you've been watching, but uh, <laughs> we welcome we've the met. kind comments. Thank we've you. Got very Airfix, much. We've got Airfix in the chat as well. Airfix is in the chat. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. There he is. Hi, Dale or Brooke, whoever. Um, oh, we've got Fenris. He's now able to join us as well. Hi, my friend. How are you? I'm doing all right. How about yourselves? Uh, good, good. Oh, good. Uh, you're from the you're the other side of the Atlantic, aren't you? You're in um, America, yep. isn't it? Yeah. Yep. So, how what what time is it there? Uh, it's ten thirty, so it's not oh, it's not hours, terribly it's early. Ah, it's not bad, is it? Five hours behind. That's all good. Yeah. Uh, somehow yeah. I I messed up my math and I thought it was going to be at seven thirty this morning, and then I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> I don't know how I did that. <laughs> no, that's fine. no. Well, if you yeah, well you did it if you're at seven thirty this morning, then you didn't miss the uh, the Hornby. Um, uh, range launch, which was quite interesting to see. 
Um, you know, it's uh, I, as I was, I was talking to someone last week with, with Airfix and Hornby. Airfix, um, you know, they produce the models and uh, we build them, but with Hornby, they they you know, you buy the kits already, you know, they're already made and painted, and they're having to develop everything for the technology of now. And they've just released their app where you can now control your railway from an app. I just, I did blows me away if you want if you fancy it go and watch it after our after the live stream here go and watch the hornby event and every time simon says dcc you've got to take a swing <laughs> of a drink or something so i can assure you it's only 10 minutes but you know it's a lot of drinking involved dcc MD, <laughs> mdccc and oh crumbs i was like i thought crumbs he's uh his teeth are going to fall out at one point. DCC. I, so I'm definitely uh, clearly more of an airfix man because even though I do like model railways, uh, I have been in, interested in both for all of my life. Uh, it all yeah. just seemed a bit too technical for me. I'd rather just glue some bits of plastic together and work it out from there. Not not download stuff. On, and I'm only in my 30s. I'm not even that old. Oh <laughs> I, right, I, it's yeah, still, it's still above my head. Mm. But they've done so. They did their launch, which was interesting. Some interesting edits in that one is, as well. Um, but you know, I think that the beauty with Hornby is that they they're they they're the the brand. I'd like to call Hum, Hum, Hornby a brand, as in it's like an umbrella. But you've got to imagine that each of the the sections of Hornby, so Airfix, Scale Electrics, um, the railway, you know, and 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 the rest, they're all they've got to be gauged to all areas all ages so like whereas you've got the the new play trains the oo gauge the tt 120 they're all aiming at pacific age and level i believe and airfix is the same you know do not do not forget the glory to me is the quick bills now people mock me by saying this but i can assure you no whatever age you are a quick build even if you're not into you know doing it you you get a decent model at the end of it you know, and I think the quick, I'd like to see a few more quick builds this year. I love their Jeep, their concept Jeep that I built this year. I thought that was really, really good. So hopefully we'll see some more quick builds in the range as well. Uh, Not in the keen chat, the stickers they put in it though. No, before. no, they need a little bit. I think it needs to be a bit yeah. more, a bit more sticky because you put them down, you press them in. And I have known that they do peel off a little bit, and then I've gone back in there with some other glue to stick them I, down. I, admit, so. I didn't have I mean, a problem with mine. We did a one hundred and nine with um, with Sandy's daughter, and we we I ended up having to glue it and put decals on it because the the stickers weren't great. So yeah, uh, my friend bought me a, a quick build Spitfire partly because he thought it would annoy me because that's the sort of friendship we have, <laughs> and he, he, he got it out in the pub. Um, so I'd already had a pint. And he said, oh, this is probably going to annoy you. And I went, no, let's do it right here, right now. Let's make it. So I yeah. made a Spitfire, an Airfix Quick Build Spitfire in the pub whilst drinking. It took about I 20 minutes. It. it was lovely. Yeah. It was good fun. Way to go. And people in the pub started asking questions about it. And hopefully I managed to sell a few on Airfix's behalf. Really? Good for you. What, what's more, what's just interesting as well with that is how many pints did that involve? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and him about 30. No, I don't, no, it's the start of the night. I only had one pint, and I finished it yeah. before the second pint. It was very easy. Brilliant. Uh, so we had we had some predictions yesterday. I'm going to put out my predictions. I think they are going to bring out a one to forty eight um, Spitfire this year. I think they're going to bring out a Beetle or a Land Rover for um, the uh, um, start sets, because I think they're missing. Um, I also believe that they will probably launch the Nimrod as a vintage classic. But Which, uh, as I've been recently told, that isn't pre-Hornby, though, is it? It was 2008 was the Nimrod, so that was... That wasn't pre Hornby. That was Hornby, wasn't it? Because they they then they get bought out in two thousand and six. So, um, I don't know. Maybe I may or re-release the Nimrod somewhere along the line because I can't believe that 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 plane has only been released once. So whether it was a reboxing or something, I don't know. Um, but anyways, um, uh, by and by with that one. Uh, I also would like if they would 
um, to uh, release a couple of uh, some more 135 scale tanks, mm. whether they're Academy reboxings or they've got Academy to tour them and pack them for them. I'd like to see a couple of tanks, maybe uh, um, a Challenger that, you know, I, you know, just saying a Challenger too, you know. So those are sort of things I'm looking at. Obviously, Bearcat, but um, mm-hmm. apparently they are going to release uh, um, an STL file to print one on my Humbro 3D printer. <laughs> so, Is uh, that with a base? <laughs> That's with a <the> base, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, um, obviously people are crying out and saying 124 scale Hurricane. If they pull that off, then there will be a round of applause from me. Um, to be honest, I don't think the one that that the, they have had out. Certainly, when I did it, I, I was quite impressed with the the kit. I don't really think there's too much wrong with that kit, and there's that much call for a new Hurricane. Being perfectly honest, well, I'd like to, it's going by what I've seen so far. I'm unsure how that Revel 130, 132 scale Hurricane's doing because I've seen a few people obviously mm. building it on YouTube. But there hasn't been that many videos. Whereas the Spitfire, I can name you six or seven people who are building that Spitfire from FX. At least. The Rebel Hurricane, yeah. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I, would, I mean, I, I think for me, um, what's going to be the most telling is going to be the, the 35th scale and the 76th scale armor and and the bits like that that they release you know like last year we had the big reveal that 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 you know that they've got academy doing all the moldings and the toolings and i think you might be right in saying they're going to do something a bit more modern like the chally or the uh, you know maybe an abrams or something like that um i think that for me is going to be where the interest this year is going to lie i'd like to see him do some 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 more civilian vehicles or maybe some you know uh, like tankers or something in yeah. 35th scale, you know, like they put out the Katie, uh, not last year, it was a year before, wasn't it? Um, yeah. and um, I'd like to see him do some some sort of support vehicles like that, but I think, yeah, I think you're right, I think we're going to get some some modern era armor, yeah. I, I do think if I can be uncharacteristically serious. I know because it's never going to happen that F- I know that the FX will not announce a range just for me. Like I would love it if they just went really bizarre and like 1920s and 30s stuff and sod the modern stuff. Uh, even if they don't announce anything that I will run out and buy, I will probably end up with at least one of them. And I just want them to do a nice varied mix to try and please as many people as possible. And they seem to do that every year. So um, I'm fingers mm. crossed they're going to have another solid another solid year of people going, oh, you made the wrong modern thing, and oh, you made the wrong Marcus Spitfire, and all that bollocks, because that's part of it, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, right. I, yeah. The other thing is, is that the car range is missing now, isn't it? You know, the last time Airfix were, really, were were heavily releasing cars was when they were owned by he- Heller, and they did announce uh, two years ago that they were going to be in partnership and release things like the Peugeot and stuff. Um, I like to see um, 130, 132 cars in the range. Um, yeah. Maybe a couple of 124s. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, they've they've got quite a fair few 24th scale cars in the range anyway, haven't they? Um, yeah. And, you know, some, some larger scale ones that they uh, they put out last year and um, in, in previous announcements, like the Jaguar and the... Uh, the, the other bits and pieces that they announced. So I, I don't know whether we'll see many cars this year. I think the focus may be a bit more on uh, the 72nd, the 48th, and the 35th scale armor or, you know, other vehicles, to be honest. That that would be my guess because, I mean, and I think it's going to be more uh, modern stuff because how many Jag Panthers are there out there? They've already got a Tiger. They did the Brombar yeah. last year, you know. Mm-hmm. How many other tanks are there already out there? Whereas with yeah. the modern stuff, I mean, there's I can think of probably four Macava kits, Mark One, Two, Three, and Four, you know, from uh, from Takeom. Um, yeah. So there might be a gap for something like that there, um, you know, um, some uh, maybe a Leopard because the only Leopard two I can think of is the Revel one, and that's an absolute arse of a kit. So, you know, 
maybe maybe you know we could be looking for some more modern stuff rather than the old World War Two armor because, like I say, you know there's there's so much of it on the market, isn't there already? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Fenris, I mean, you're I, in I, sorry, go on, go on, James. Sorry, mate. Uh, I, I'm hoping personally that they they expand the 148 range. Um, yeah, I some vehicles yeah, would great. be, I think, a really good idea. Um, I, I spoke to Dal and that um, over a year ago. I sort of said to them that I personally would love to see more British vehicles from Second World War because there's not that many out there. I mean, there's a few yeah. kits, don't get me wrong, but there's so many subjects in which we could, um, I'd love to see in the range. But 148, mm. I think, is certainly an area in which a bit of concentration probably would be a good shout. I, I think so. that's in their planning, honestly. You know, the... Mm for them to go out and actually release academy kits under their branding says a lot that they are committed but they haven't got the 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 designers to do that you know they they you know i think well they got five designers now six designers and yeah. each one of them are working and sometimes these designers can spend up to 3 years on a particular kit mm. depending on what they're doing i was interested to hear that the uh, quick build designer is now doing a project for them so whether that means there's not going to be that many quick builds this year who knows or maybe there's going to be a gap but they have got a good i did ask the question because i've been asked on a few occasions why there is no hurricane in the quick build range obviously i spoke to dale and dale said sometimes you've got to look at what you've got you know you know what you sell spitfire you may lose on by selling a hurricane i, I understand mm. you know there's the, i think people don't realize it's the business and the practicalities on reasons why kits do not see the light of day. Um, just because I want a bear cat doesn't mean that FX are going to build a bear cat. You know, I know there's a lot of people who nod their head in appreciation of the fact there is no decent bear cat, but then if FX don't do it, somebody else probably will, you know, and probably yeah, I'll but, end up buying it from that company. I mean, as we've seen from the, the previous show and tells that they've done, unless there's a, a really decent surviving example for them to be able to scan and mm. get the plans from, you know, it's unlikely they're going to be able to do yeah. a decent rendering of the kit, isn't it? So you've got to yeah. think about the that side of things as well. You know, is there a surviving example that they can reasonably get access to without spending a fortune to do it, you know? Yeah, exactly. If if they've got to fly them and all the kit and everything else out to America and they've got to hire the people to do this, that, and the other, it could end up costing more, the logistics of it, than they'll make back from uh, the kits, you know, after all the production costs and everything else have gone into it. So Yeah. See, I'll tell you something else I've always found quite interesting, and you know, people in the chat can also uh, say I'm wrong, but... Like, for instance, call it, let's go Spitfire. People are crying out or asking for the Spitfire, where you, which has got, you know, the, the trainer Spitfire that has two seats <laughs> in. Now, Airfix will probably never release a kit with that, but I would love a, um, a plastic company just to create a, one little sprue with two halves of a fuselage that will fit with all the other pieces, but instead of it being a single, it will be a... Uh, mm -hmm a twin seater and all they've got to do is then is do that and put the um the uh canopy in as well so you know in, you know i know it's it would be two tools then wouldn't it it'll be uh yeah you're, yeah, you're talking yeah. you're talking about the difference between having a, a spitfire with a pilot yeah, yeah. yeah. you can already buy a tr9 anyway not from airfix i know but it's yeah. already on the market and it's a bit of an obscure thing anyway yeah i've got it i've got it but it's not it's a resin isn't it it's there's, um well there's the checkmaster one but there's also the az model injection molded tr9 oh i didn't know that one yeah, yeah but would that look. would that then fit with um all the other pieces from an air from an airfix kit do you know what i mean or is it just is it an actual model itself it it's a full kit oh, it's a full, full kit, kit. okay full that's, kit that's what, yeah yeah okay so fair enough fair enough on that just quickly looking over as you know if we look on here there's the uh launch video where they're waiting for it to start at four o'clock so we've got 10 minutes and also if you go to the range launch um what's wrong one which i'm looking at i'm looking at the oh what have i done with it the that one hmm. there they're saying um uh, this one here we'll be back soon on the website so the website is down now on airfix so we're just waiting really for uh 
the range launch to start, and then we'll be able to uh, watch it. <coughs> we will be, um, last year, people moaned that we were talking over the video. We are a commentary video. This live stream is commentary. <laughs> so we, when something excites us or something's a bit meh, we will speak it. Honestly, please feel free to go and watch. If you don't want us to interrupt you watching it, feel free to go over to the Airfix web, uh, the Airfix uh, uh, video. We're watching it at the same time as you are. So you will you can watch it without us talking over it and then come back to us while we discuss and actually go through the website. That's the key um, bit. Don't forget to come back yeah. to us. Don't forget to come back to <laughs> us. Um because we have got um we have got somebody from FX gonna join us as well. So uh um so what the plan is is to watch a video and, and laugh and cry, jump around ecstatic, you know, be really joyful that Airfix have released that thing that you wanted. Um, okay. Then we'll come and chat about it. We'll go onto the website because <laughs> the website will be live. Then go through most of the tooling, and then we'll have twenty minutes, thirty minutes with uh, with the FX rep and talk about you know some models. And you can ask him any questions. But honestly, don't go in there in the chat and start saying, "Oh, why didn't you release this this year? Why didn't you release that?" Because you don't want to know. We wouldn't even ask him. You know, they've got they, to, they've they... got to make a range for everybody. And if yes. there's one thing yeah. in that range that you like, then yeah. that's that's a good release for yeah. you. All right. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, that's how I see it. Yeah, exactly. And and remember, it's um, it you know, it it's for keeps. But uh, yeah, it, you know. <laughs> If it's not this year, it'll be next year. You know, just it's one of them. You know, don't be rude. You know, uh, and uh, and and just be really thoughtful. The, the the better the thought, the more thought out your questions, the more likely we're going to uh, ask or put them up on the screen to be answered. Is that simple? Is that fair enough? I think so. Ah, so here we go. Eight minutes to go. I'm. I'm. I'm so, I don't know about you, but I'm always excited. Like it's. I'm like a little boy coming down the stairs <laughs> under the Christmas tree. Finding that the uh, the Santa hasn't left me a PS4. He's left you a double. I'm going to go for the Mark Eight Spitfire this year. That's the one they released with the uh, with yeah. the, the high altitude wings, like uh, C- elliptical wings on. Seafire Mark One. <laughs> yeah. Anybody it's else? A, it's not a Spitfire. It's a Seafire. Yeah. <laughs> well, people keep saying, "Why don't they do the Hornet again?" Because it's not a very good kit, is it? I mean, there's there's loads of things that can be done. Oh, all of them. Just announce every plane. Yeah. There we go. Get it out of the way. We we haven't because they've been very transparent about their about how they you know Luke's Luke's presentation is amazing. Ah, we got Miss Modler in the stream. Here she comes. Because Luke's done these um, brilliant um, um, talks about the Airfix range. Um, he, they go into depth on why they select different kits, why they select a certain kit, why they do this, why do they do that. So, um, you know, I, I think that if you really want to see what they're going to release in the next three or four years, just look at what they've released previously when it was tooled and whether it's uh, they're going to redo it because it's an old tooling and needs to be redone. Do you know what I mean? It's quite, uh, um, quite simple, really, I guess, <laughs> to do. Hello, Ms. Modler. How are you? Hey. Are you are you ill from work as well? No, I I literally had a doctor's appointment at like two, and it got a lot of delay that I've just got home. <laughs> oh so, wow! I mean, I had to go get like medication and stuff, but it yeah. means I can be here. I just got to catch up with work afterwards, but that's fine. <laughs> that's easy done, isn't it? Yeah, all yeah. working from home now. Uh, crazy looker. Thank you very much, my friend, for the super chat of ten pounds. And before you and uh, send your flying hours to models for heroes. Yeah, we discussed that last Shout. night. You know, some people were saying that they they won't they won't become a member of the Airfits Club for no matter any reasons. But that doesn't give you a, a buyout clause there not to grab those flying hours. It costs you nothing. And if you do send them to um, uh, models for heroes. Give us an email and I will reimburse you the postage on how much it costs you to send those those flying hours to Models for Heroes. Can I say fairer than that? So there's no reason. Anyways, where are we up to? Let's so quickly just back on here and have a look. No, we're still waiting. There's four minutes to go. So if I was you now, if you want to watch it, I'll go and get you, screw yourself a cup of tea, go and have a waz or something like, you know, if you need to empty yourself, <laughs> and come back and relax for the uh, for the show. 
Uh, I think yeah, I brought a bottle. That's like grand a idea. I shall be back. Yes, <laughs> everyone's now left the chat. We, you know, we have got two hundred and sixteen people in the chat listening to us go on about ethics and how much. Hello, you everybody. Mm. <laughs> Hello. A Jaguar, please. That that is that is uh, pretty good. That's a good shout. That you know, a Jaguar. When was the last Jaguar released? It's an underrated plane, and it's now old yeah. enough that it's definitely definitely time for it to, to make a comeback in model form. Yeah, definitely time. Definitely time. Moss. Um, yes. Just check your private chat, fella. Yeah. Okay. Just looking now. So while you're doing that, if you don't mind, I'm just going to yeah. um, repeat what you said, actually. Mm. Um, if if you collect your um, flying hours for uh, yourself, make sure you use them. They're a great thing. But if you don't use them, don't throw the box out without cutting that token off, pop it in an envelope and send it to Models for Heroes. Um, Model he Models for Heroes are a great charity. They work with um, service men and women from all the, all the branches. So that's military mm. as well as civilian. Um, and they use model making as a therapeutic measure for helping treat their yeah. ailments. So we all know as model makers um, the benefits we get for our mental health um, from making models. Some Sometimes the kits don't help your mental health, but all in all, um, as you know, it gives you a good time to relax, come out of everything else that's going on around you. Um, and I can't Im impress upon you just how important that is to these uh, these people um, and the benefits are just truly amazing and one thing I will tell you is a little story um, to do with models for heroes um, as a beneficiary someone arrived at a session uh, with a therapist um, they've been doing therapy for a long long time really the therapist knew almost nothing about what had gone on why they were in the situation they were it was it, not pointless because that's not what that therapy is for. It is po everything is put to a point. Mm. But I can tell you from an experience of watching someone come in, sit, watch people make models, not really overly keen to be there, but within five minutes or so, start looking at models, playing with models, and then within 10, 15 minutes, that beneficiary then talking about their issues and problems so much. That the therapist is sat behind him with a pad and paper writing all the things down mm. they didn't know anything about so that's yeah. how important that therapy is that's how important that model kit is and that little token can make that much difference to someone's life so um models for heroes all is the website um if you haven't got any more um any hours that you can give them or you want to make a donation, make sure you do. Um, check out the web page. They've got some things in which you can buy, which some things are useful for your bench, some things are wristbands and all sorts of things. Um, show your support and love for them um, because they're part of our community and we really should get behind them. Thanks, Mark. Brilliant. That's right. Yeah, I've just put the address now to send your... Uh... Um, yeah. uh, flying hours. If you if you if you don't want to become an Airfix Club member, and you do have flying hours uh, available, and you don't want to use them to get a new kit, then feel free to send them to this address here. <laughs> and like I've said, um, if you do send them and you need you know or whatever, and um, um, and you feel that you can't really afford to do it, send them, and I will reimburse you the postage on that. Um, obviously, I I personally don't give um models for heroes my flying hours because i'm an ethics club member but um i will donate and i have donated i've bought um the um i think it, i think i bought off the stand uh, the decals that you sold they're yeah. quite good and i've also got a few kits here that will end up being oh. up there oh was two, minute two minute warning two minute warning I've just um, I've just shared the link to Models for Heroes as well, so that is now in the chat. If you want, to, if anyone in the chat wants to go to the website, wonderful. Just turn this down a little bit because that's a little bit loud, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. So two minute warning. Two minute warning. Yes. Right. Let me just get rid of that uh, message. 
And that's the mod- that is the modelsforheroes.org.uk for the website. Oh, right. It's, uh, all of us here. All gone quiet now. 268 in the chat. Wow, brilliant. I'm here as fast at, uh, on scale, mates, as fast as my fingers will take me. If yeah, you need any fact yeah. checking. Yeah, yeah fact check. Yeah. I'll probably forget and I'll just go, oh, they're making that kit. Oh, and mm. then just swoon a little bit. The good thing about scale, mates, is that it's normally up and running. They normally have every kit yeah. on the list within about half an hour, don't they? So, yeah. Madness. <laughs> right, here we go. Hope everybody's washed their hands after they come back. Yeah, wash <laughs> their hands. Yeah, I've dipped mine. <laughs> In tab, you're extra thin. Wow. Yeah. Sully's saying five pound on a new spit. So here we go. Duh. Let's go, let's go, let's go full screen. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dale. I'm the head of brand here at Airfix. Let's take a look at the 2023 product range. Quick builds, quick builds. Woo, woo, woo. This year, we introduced a brand new category. Yes. Build range, London okay. Trials. I love Ooh, that. Yes. Taxi, I love it. Love that. Updated. Brilliant. And it wouldn't be complete without it's this the bus. new London oh. bus. Look at the that. largest quick build model to date, containing 88 parts. That's brilliant. I, I wonder if that's a bus replacement We've given for Hornby. the next two products a new paint job. <laughs> the McLaren P1 will soon be available in white, and the Lamborghini Aventador changes to this stunning yellow. I built that, and I? Yeah, I built that one. Stunning. That's awesome. a bit subjective, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> 2023 marks the 80th anniversary of Operation Chastise, oh, also known as the Dam Buster Raid. Oh, nice. The daring raids were carried out by 617 Squadron. That was a sexy cat. Using <laughs> specially developed bouncing yeah. bombs attached to modified Avro Lancasters. The crew became known as the Dambusters. To mark the anniversary, we are releasing an 80th anniversary gift set. This set will include a brand new design and tool F35B Lightning II and our classic Lancaster B3 Special, both in 172nd scale. This set includes aircraft display stands, bouncing bomb trolley, for the Lancaster, and of course, paints, glues, and brushes. Everything you need to get started. Yes. Utilizing the new F-85B tooling, we've paired it up with the starter set Spitfire to create this then and now gift set. Yeah! Oh my god. Love that. <laughs> Love that. Both aircraft represent- Really the pushing the fat aren't they? The F-85B yes. will also be available in a standalone starter set, complementing our Spitfire Mark 5C and Red Arrow Hawk set. I didn't expect this to start set, but I'm very happy it exists. <laughs> Love that stand. Moving away from aircraft, we're expanding mm. our 141st scale range of starter set cars. Yes, Land Rover! Yeah. The superb scale oh, replica of the current 765LT. Yes. The finished item will be moulded in the base colour orange, meaning starters Land-Rover. don't need to apply paint to finish the model. This model contains just 35 pieces. Next, we have the Lamborghini Huracan Evo, yes. again in 43rd scale and containing just 36 parts. Love that. This kit will be moulded in its base colour white. Moving to yeah, I got a hurricane after all. DB5! Nice. 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 Release the Aston Martin DB5 starter Love it. set. This kit will include 29 pieces and be moulded in grey plastic. Next, we have this classic Land Rover yeah, C1 Yeah, they took my advice. This utilitarian vehicle is recognised <laughs> worldwide <laughs> yeah. and wouldn't be out of place in any I knew. I thought they today. needed to do a Land Rover in starter set. This new 41st scale tool will contain 39 parts and be moulded in grey plastic. Brilliant. Very good. Like that. Come on, come on, you dancer. Give moment. me a 109. A frequently requested kit in 148 scale. Yes. Yes. A matter of time. Oh, yeah. oh my! 148 scale, Fairy Gannet. Oh. The Fairy Gannet AS1, AS4 will sit perfectly next to your Buccaneer release last year. That's a brilliant. Designed to meet the Admiralty's what requirements beast. for an aircraft. So that was like the search for so that and was the, uh, the, the, uh, um, the Gannet entered service then, in 1954, yeah, standing on my yeah. head. And the ASW <laughs> stayed in service until the mid-1960s, where it was then replaced 
Some were Look at the detail, mate. Look at that. Or perform the ECM role. Yeah. Included as a build option is the Z folding wing design, which is perhaps one of the most unusual and ingenious features of Look the Gannet, allowing it to operate from tightly packed carrier decks. It puts Heller's uh, bendy wing into the fold, fold doesn't it? Well as down. <laughs> the Gannet used a double Look man at the detail. power plant, essentially two engines, each powering one of the contra rotating propellers. The Gannet could shut down one engine in flight to extend the aircraft range. The kit will include a wide range of weapons and three fully detailed cockpits. The schemes in this boxing focus on its service with the Royal Navy, but also served with the Australians, Germans and Indonesians. The A scheme depicts XA-460 wow. and AS-4 before conversion to an ECM-6. B wow. scheme depicts XA-418. At this rate, they're going to release the bomb bag, aren't they? Squadron. At this well, rate. based on HMS Uproar in 1958. It features distinctive blue and white markings on the spinner. C scheme depicts XA391 of 820 Naval Air Squadron that was operating from HMS Bulwark in 1957. The aircraft experienced engine trouble and had to ditch into the sea off the coast of Northern Ireland. I love that decal scheme with the red, was red stripes on the back and front. Economical repair. Yeah. Love that. A new addition really to our nice. 135 scale armor range. A scout tank! Scout car Mark II. Yes! Yes! Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. The I love that. And was that. designed to fulfill a British Army that that one up. for a reconnaissance car that was issued in 1949. The Mark II was designed to mount a Browning machine gun within the turret. This offered the crew better protection, but also raised the height of the vehicle and decreased the crew when compared to the Mark I. The Ferris used by the British money. Army for a number of roles, <laughs> yeah. entering service in 1952 and not leaving British service until after the first Gulf War in 1991. However, the Ferret is widely exported and as such is still in use by I various love that. And forces around there's the world today. There's some beauty this kit about will that. include a Look diversity that. turret with Browning machine gun, some interior detail and opening Wow, hatches. that Ferret. A scheme represents a Ferret that served in West Berlin during the Cold War. Brilliant. This particular Ferret was used to escort a local schoolboy to him from school after he was harassed by East German guards. B scheme shows a lesser known side to the ferret. It was employed as a range safety vehicle at Batas, Canada. The vehicle was painted red in certain areas to ensure it stood out. Look at that. Love that. Look at the 2 5 fire. scheme. Brilliant. Absolutely C scheme brilliant. depicts a vehicle stationed in Cyprus belonging to Five Power, used mm. for peacekeeping missions. Oh, I couldn't tell if they just had a little bit of 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 this kit includes wow. a fully detailed chassis, fully detailed yeah. cab interior with clear moulded windows. I guess that's Academy have done that one then, haven't they? Open or closed. Just yeah, done the back end. Yeah. And a total of 100. Love that parts. back end. Classic kit, new parts. Okay. Following on from the 148 scale Buccaneer released in 2022, this year, we released the S2B variant, the REF edition. Yeah. This kit will include Hold additional that. parts to cater for the various upgrades and changes seen when the aircraft... Did you build that one then, Dale? These include Bolge <laughs> Bombe, <laughs> REF slipper tank, and various armament additions and more. This is so how you do a release uh, boxing, a range Allowing the model to represent either an early S2B type with D-type roundels, an aircraft partaking in Operation Red Flag, a 12-squadron aircraft undertaking anti-shipping roles, and a Gulf War scheme. Our third release is this 148 scale Hunter Tooling. This issue will include various new parts. Oh, nice. The FR10 yeah. nose, enlarged drop tanks for the FGA9, and modified flaps. In addition, we have also corrected the base kit to ensure the release is as accurate as possible. Our stunning box art depicts Alan Pollock's aircraft flying through Tower Bridge, April 1968. <laughs> Following on from the 2021 release of the 172nd scale Mosquito B16. New parts have been added to create this PR-16 variant. Mm. This Which kit will obviously include new buy. parts to replace the bomb <laughs> yes. base and other detailed <laughs> changes. We'll include Sexy two schemes with this release, yeah. and the box art depicts a 60-squadron aircraft returning to base over the Alps after a mission into Germany. Yeah. Reintroduction, so which classic kits? Our range of classic kits sees a number of reintroductions, new liveries and new tools. A reintroduction to the 172nd scale range, this P51D Mustang with new decal options. 
the box art depicts Pauline of 505 Fighter Squadron. I love the way they've the got their fire back on the planes attacked. again, you know. Yeah, same. Paris that box art is so nice. Yeah, it's when they, they used to sanitise it, didn't they? Yeah. This one seventy second scale zero will change the The zero's a bloody good kit. It's the pretty Japanese good. Invasion I'm glad to hear that. I've got one in my stash. Yeah. Our 2020 yeah, tooling, the Spitfire Mark 5C, has been given a refresh with two new schemes. Good. The first yeah. scheme mm -hmm. depicted on the box front is EE602. That's what we needed. Another Mark 5 yeah. Spitfire. From a raid. <laughs> yes, yeah. because they'll sell. And because Bell yeah, was absolutely. returning from her famous 25th mission. Oh. EE602 is now flown by Biggin Hill Heritage Hangar. Yeah, I like it. Mm. This kit will include two schemes that utilize the tropical filter and clip wings included within the kit. Initially <laughs> released last year, the Hawker Tempest Mark V will include new parts and deck options to create the post-war variant. A scheme depicts XCD. I like that. That's a, that is a brilliant kit to build. Yeah, a straight a reintroduction. This 172nd scale Nat T1 is making a reappearance back into the range for 2023. Yeah. The 2010 tooling of this 172nd scale. Oh, 110! We did it really Come on. Oh, oh, love that yeah. bit of <laughs> A scheme and the box it's art. Such a lovely looking bird, isn't around it? North Africa on an anti-shipping mission. The 172nd scale Messerschmitt 262A returns to the range with two okay. new schemes. Mm. Both represent aircraft that were later captured during service at the end of the war. This release Beautiful. includes the parts for the fighter mm. and bomber variants of the 262. That's why I got it in the Adding Christmas bundle. Adding to the range bundle. of our 172nd scale Harriers, the Hawker yes. Sibley Harrier GR1 AV8A is being reintroduced to the range of new When schemes. was that tool, that, ha that shows XB Harrier? A-Scheme 795 of one squadron, which took part in deck handling trials aboard HPS Harbour Very Harbor early tool, in right? In 1971. Yeah. The old one. B-Scheme is that of an AV8A of US Marine Corps wearing a temporary Arctic camouflage. Yeah. This will be the first time we've included parts and schemes for a GR1 and AV8. Oh, that's some decal scheme, that. The North American B25. Yeah, but probably then we'll be beige, right? Yeah. Do the decals. A scheme <laughs> is that of okay. OH7, which flew over 80 missions in North Africa and Italy between 1943 and 1944. B scheme is a B25 Ooh. provided to the Red Air Force Ooh. under the Len Lease program and features distinctive yeah. nose art. A combination nice. of frames that's from previous nice. releases. Yeah. This issue of the 172nd scale Phantom FG1 and FGR2 allows for three unique schemes. A scheme shows a special scheme applied to XV470, featuring a rather aggressive looking shark now. B scheme is an aircraft of 892 Naval Air Squadron that was zapped by crews of the USS Saratoga. <laughs> C scheme has previously been featured in an earlier boxing when it became known as Black Mike. XV582 is seen in the kit wearing the colours it wore during the land's end to John O'Groat's record-breaking flight. The last variant to be issued of our fairly recent tooling, the Blackburn Buccaneer SQB awesome, with Gulf War schemes and weapons. Yeah. The 172nd scale Vickers Wellington Mark I features new decal options. Oh. A scheme depicts N2871, an aircraft Lovely. that made an emergency landing at North Coates after sustaining damage. Yeah, B Ollie's right. They've gone for more obscure schemes example. on these re-releases. But nice <gasps> scheme. Time for the, oh, nice nice time for the, chastise. Mm. the 172nd scale Avro Lancaster B3 Special will feature new schemes, one of which is Guy Gibson's aircraft, ED-132. Wow. The second release of this 2019 tooling, the De Havilland Tiger Moth in 148 scale. Somebody said that like an new, aircraft new, uh, the Britannia flight that. that landed on HMS Eagle in 1964, becoming possibly the last biplane to land on a British carrier. God, I love Tiger Next, Moth. Next, uh, yeah. our <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jump in whenever you want, Matt, for more than a minute. Hello, chaps. <gasps> there are three schemes included. Wow! Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that line. Scheme that showing is the sexy. Yeah, that is nice. Royal Navy reserves for Operation Momentum. The box art yeah, will show one of the last in, sea series in service with like the fleet air nice arm of the Royal Australia. Reissues. Yeah. Utilizing parts including they covered various off the, releases, uh, we're now able releases, to release the 148 scale Havilland yeah. Vampire FB5. Yeah, they've done them, yeah. Oh, them, yeah. Oh, right, well, we'll have to catch up with that in a minute. The 148 scale <laughs> yeah. Gloucester Meteor F8 sees a return to the, the range <laughs> with new scheme yeah. options. A scheme is that of WL181. The fair is on it. Short Just try one. Display team. B scheme is an aircraft from the Royal Australian Air Force display team, the Meteorites. Both of these <gasps> aircraft are preserved at opposite sides. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah.
These games are very good, aren't they? This they the are bit, fantastic. Yeah. 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 And now on to our ever-growing vintage classic range. First produced in 1960, oh, yes. and last seen in the Look way that. in 2004. They sell for like 60 quid at the moment. I know, thank they're God. Thank God. Thank you, Ed. 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 Thank Clear parts of this kit have been reversed. Is that a good kit then? Though? New um, Meaning they I've made a couple, bad. not particularly. <laughs> no Last interior at all, but from the seat. But... Oh, the buffalo. buffalo. Oh, come I want on. on. I want oh. that. First introduced into the I think we kind of had an inkling that was going to happen, though, didn't we, really? Buffalo. Yeah, buffalo. Yeah. Air Force and US Buffaloes Navy. are very, very expensive in the, the first Netherlands. First with the Mint Classic range. We're bringing yeah. back an early Dolphin. Yeah! The kit's a big fighter. First introduced in 1963 and last seen as a pair. Well, Rex, we got bad feedback from you, mate. Last seen in the F. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, hey. Hold hey. it. Hey. I one said last night. Scale, oh. Fairy Rotodyne is a unique airfix tool and of an iconic experimental Amazing. design. I'm getting that. The Rotodyne yeah. was first introduced back in 19. <laughs> you can have my one if you want. This no, vintage that one. classic <laughs> was first introduced in 1975 and last seen in the range. 124 scale. Wow. This kit will be released with original uncensored box art. Uncensored box art is 57 centimeters it's long, on it. 46 As long it? and will on include tail, two historically <laughs> accurate transfers on Last the tail of the box art. And there it is. <gasps> <Go down. laughs> hey. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yes. dear. As the UK's main <laughs> air defense weapon. Jeff just soiled himself. Rotodyne. 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 The vintage classic kit was last seen in the range in 1975 75. after being introduced in It's even got James May in the, the corner there. Like, you know, missing <laughs> <laughs> it Comes in your free old James May. Having said yeah. that, the clear parts have been reverse engineered, tweaked, and a whole oh. new clear tool has been created. New, to new clear nice. tool on that one. Yeah. Nice. Brunel's famous paddle steamer, oh. launched in 1837. Wow. This is a really that. good paddle selection. Yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. 180 scale kit. I'm so impressed so far. Yeah, Last year I was a bit meh, but this year is brilliant. The year before the was even more dire. Last year was all right, but this year is really now. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video for future updates on our product Thanks, Dale. Thank you, Dale. Smashed it. Smashed it. Yeah, really impressed. <laughs> they have done a good selection there. Yeah. Wait, hang on, is that the new stuff that I missed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Land, Land Rover. Rover. You said they were good. You were like, oh, they have to do Land Rover. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I said Land Rover or Beetle. They need to do one, yeah. I'm not car. even gonna say what that is. Uh, <laughs> attempt to say what that is. Yeah, Lamborghini. A car. <laughs> a car. <laughs> it's like a plane. Matt Johnson but it doesn't just fly. said no 124th defiant few money saved. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the way that I always look at it when there's nothing outstanding that I want. Is that fool? I can save up for the next year. They announce yeah. everything I want. <laughs> yeah. I well, it looks like I'm going stuff. to be uh, spending quite a lot Is this that year. A new, then. a new Aston Martin. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't that look nice? It does. Yeah, Digi five. Like yeah. Really they had the old kit, didn't they? And that wasn't very yeah. good. The Ferret Scout as well. That's, That's going nice. to be a bomber. That is. Is that 135 that. scale? 135 Academy, I guess. Okay, yeah, Academy uh, coll collaboration. Yeah. Thanks for watching. No, thank you, Dale. Oh thank you, for thank you, select. Dale. Right, I need to fun. go back and look at all of them now because I missed all of that. You missed it all, did you? I missed what it. Yeah, show. sadly, I came in about quarter past. <laughs> yeah, the the site's yeah. up and running. All the all the yeah. bits are on the site now. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I I've already pre-ordered <laughs> way too much. Oh, there <laughs> yeah. I said I wasn't buying them um, this year. That Oster yeah. Antarctic, by the way, is only six pounds ninety nine. Which is oh, ridiculous. Yeah. That, that it's is, literally yeah. a tenth of the cost they sell for at the moment. Yeah. Definitely. That's mad. It is mad. Yeah. Oh, and a fairy I... granite. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And with the folded oh, wings. Yes. You all idea. thought Hella did it. <laughs> Airfix have done better, like, you know. Was that the hint? Was that the hint they put on the... Yeah. Yeah. Either that or the Rotodyne. Yeah. Or well, the Rotodyne. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, <can't, Hello? laughs> I said that last night. I said, I said, uh, no, they... Uh, somebody just said, saw a first release bomb bug on eBay last week. 
three hundred pounds. Well, that'll significantly go down now, yeah. won't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Land Rover DB5, Rotodyne Oster, all my spies for me. Yeah, definitely. The Rotodyne was last out in nineteen ninety six, apparently. Yeah. But before wow. then, it hadn't been out since nineteen seventy three. So that yeah. is long overdue. I tell you what, yeah. they I think they smashed it this year. I think yeah. they yeah. really right. smashed it. They've got so on the set on the well. yeah. Spitfire so, and Lightning and Dam Buster's yeah. version. Wow. I wish I'd been so, in the start. Yeah, the fairy <laughs> gannet. Honestly, the fairy gannet is the one, I think. Yeah. Just, agree. Know, with the mm-hmm. with the folded wings as well. I I'm sure forty nine ninety nine as right? well. Wow. There you go. Oh, there yeah. it is with the folded wings and everything. And I say, knows how, I've forgotten how stumpy it is as well, isn't it? Yeah, I would say that looks yeah. beautiful, but th- I'd be lying. It looks impressive. <laughs> I love the aircraft, but it's yeah, it some beautiful look, design it. work. Yeah, yeah. Yes. they've and from they've accurately replicated it. Yes, and, yeah. And from what they've said historically <laughs> as well, because they've done it in thirty-eight scale first, it's very or it's much easier for them to release oh. it in one seventy second in the future. So. I would have liked to have seen them include a set of Luftwaffe decals as well, though. Yeah. I think just doing the three Royal Naval um, uh, decal schemes is a bit well, short-sighted. Just wait, just wait for the next time they release it. Yeah. I mean, with- <laughs> no doubt somebody will do a set, like an uh, extra decal or somebody will do a set. Yeah. But, you know, that for me is going to be, uh, it's going to be that, the Scout and the uh, the truck for me and my three must-buys this year, I think. Yeah. Just trying to see whether they've got the pictures of the actual decals that come with it, but they haven't got them on there at the moment, unfortunately. But um, yeah, that's uh, that is going to be. Uh, a f- I just find it fascinating about the about the wings, like you know, because so we were there marveling at uh, Hella's uh, mm-hmm. um, spy plane. What's it called again? Um, what was that Hella? Yeah, and um, you know, we said, "Oh, look at that! They've got folded wings on that one." But look at the folded wings on this. It's it's just absolutely incredible. Yeah, so that's, that's the first really one. impressive. The fairly gannet is the first one that they've put up on the screen. If we go back, then, um, the ferret scout that looks like a proper tidy uh beast as well, isn't it? Look at that, nice you price know. on it as well. Yeah, yeah, really 23.99, you know, 187 parts for 23 quid. That's that's yeah. well, there you go. That says it all to me. Yeah, the um the Hummerhawk I've just built at a hundred and some hundred and like ten parts, and that was twenty four pounds supposedly. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's a good price for that, especially because the suspension. Look at the suspension there, that you know the, the springs, and you've got two two schemes, I guess. Comes with a six. All the interior as well, by the look of it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, some limited interior, but yeah, it is. It's it's yeah. cracking kit. Well worth the money. That's worth it, isn't it? Yeah. Marvellous on that Just one. Just got an email That's... from Airfix telling me the wait yeah. is over. Ah, yeah, the wait same. <laughs> Never would have guessed that. <laughs> oh, I've had mine as well. <laughs> yeah. So the starter set. Solid. They have the Lightning 2 as a starter set. So i buy that. that. That for a starter set, just saying, that's £20. I mean, that is quite a lot for a starter set, but, you know, it's it's an F-35. It's not like it's uh, an old tooling, is it? It's a new tooling, so... Brand new. Yeah. Just looking through the... They're not small either. They're quite big. Looking through the prices, nothing is outrageous. Everything is really... No. No, I think the prices are are bang on. I've got to be honest. Yeah, where's the shadow In fact, in in some respects, I think some of them are too cheap. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I mean, I think there was probably a lot of kickback last year over the price mm. of the Buccaneer, you know? And I think maybe that's what's uh, led to the the lower prices this year, perhaps. You know, I mean, it's not by a lot, but, you know, they're a couple yeah. of quid cheaper, I think, than I would have priced them maybe a couple of quid more expensive. Certainly the uh, the um, the ferret. Yeah. I mean, I'm not complaining. No, no. me either. No. No, I don't, th- I don't mm. think there's any room on, on, on complaint for price. I think they've read... Not only have they read the market well with the choices, but they've read the market well and the and the, the economic situation that we're in as well. Really, yeah, well. completely, yeah. Mm. I mean that, that that for me is um, <laughs> that's a fantastic choice uh, 
marketing wise because you know um the other companies are going to release them with the same old prices whereas uh, you know airfix we've got your new tools for really good yeah. prices so uh you know they could have chucked an extra 20 quid on that gannet and i don't think anybody would have flinched you mm. know they would be quite happy to pay 70 quid for that instead of 50 so you know judging by the judging by the um the the cad designs that looks really sharp yeah uh. So the, the the series one pickup, obviously, you know the, the difference between the series one and series three is where the headlights are, isn't it? You know, um, I think series three they put the headlights on the actual wings, didn't they? So, uh, um, yeah. So the Land Rover, so that's fourteen pound ninety nine, thirty nine parts. I wonder if Ethan designed that one. That would have been the sort of thing Ethan would have designed, I reckon. But um, it's you know. They haven't got the they've they haven't got any pictures up. They've got the box art there of the Land Rover. Um 14 quid. Um was it uh 39 pieces in that one? So yeah. That'd be on my list as well to buy this week. I've got mm -hmm. the credit card empty anyway, so and I've got a fresh credit card, so they can't say, Oh, we can't release it for you yet because we can't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one was the uh the DB5. Yeah. The I mean, that'd be popular. Yeah, sexy bit because everybody's going to want to do it gold like James Bond, aren't they? So yeah, twenty nine parts in that one. That's also fourteen ninety nine. So that's a good that, price for a start kit, well. especially in that scale. You know, I mean, I mm. find it it's a little bit of an odd scale, forty third, but you know, yeah, what it is, isn't it? Mm. Just going on through. So what we got? We got six new. We've got six, then, haven't we? Six and six new models. One, two, three, four, five. So there's six toolins, and four of them are starter sets. Um, but wasn't there a truck as well? Oh, yeah, there's yeah, yeah, so well. really, that's new parts. So new parts. Oh, was it? Yeah, new parts. The Buccaneers new parts as well. The Vampire. Had new parts, didn't it? Or new skin? Uh, the British Army 30 CW2 four times four by two GS truck. Have you mentioned that one? Yeah, that's that that's the same, that's the same as the Katie, but it's a flatbed at the back, isn't it? I yeah, basically. Oh, so yeah. it's a it's a repurposed right new yeah, new parts in that one. Yeah, I and see. new parts in the oh. vampire as well, apparently. Yeah. So the bomb bug. There we go. <laughs> Bond bug. Bond bug. How many people have been wishing for that to be uh, put? Yeah, because at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to ask Dale. You know, you know what goes in? They said that they've remanufactured or reverse engineered the clear parts for this one. Yeah, that is, and yet it's still only ten pounds ninety nine. Oh, and it's ten pound ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. That's how I you think do when, it. When we went to Airfix, they said to us that um, a lot of the time, the vintage classics they lose one or the other of the, of yeah. the toolings, or, or they're not um, they're not serviceable. So in this case, I imagine that the clear parts. Their, their tooling was beyond repair, so they've had to take clear parts that they probably found somewhere or redesigned them to yeah. manage to fit the existing tooling. Yeah. Um, so I'm just, I'm just, uh, was the, so the, the quick builds now, quickly onto the quick builds, which is, which there's some new parts of quick builds, and there it is the bus. The bus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the impressive, bus. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's that's an expensive quick build though, because yeah. they're thirty quid. Yeah, but you're going to be looking at licensing and stuff for that, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. And it is it is fairly sizable. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Not is it how many parts it? it has? Eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. Fucking hell. Well, there you go then. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> the slowest, the slowest quick build that you can do from them. That, that, yeah, I think that's yeah. all right. Thirty quid seems a fine. A moderately yeah. paced build. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's quick for what it is. <laughs> I think he's well priced. I got to be honest. Yeah, it's a replacement bus service for for uh, Hornby, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I can't think of too many other buses available that are in that price range. Anyway, they usually the kits that are available uh, are upwards of about forty, fifty quid, aren't they? Mm. So, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, That's yeah. a good point. It um, depends how big it is. We don't really. Oh no, we did see it in the video. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. There's some really good kits here. Should we get Dale on? Is he yeah. here? Is he? Yeah. The man himself. Yeah. 
Let's uh, add him to the stream, shall we? Mr. FX. Hi, Dale, are you there? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, watching back. There's lots going on. Meet those there. Idiots. <laughs> no, he's not there yet. We'll, we'll come back to him then, all right? We'll come back. We'll just mute him. When he texts me and he's on, we'll, uh, I've just muted him. You know, if, they, if that's the ethics office there, maybe we should leave it on and we can hear them chatting about what they've done. <laughs> yeah, we'll get inside scoop for next year's releases. Yeah. Yeah. If they liked this year's release, can't Ooh. wait till they see that we're releasing this next year. Oh, he's, he's relocating. He's finding a new place yeah. to be. Uh, that's right then. So these, yeah, these prices, issues. Like the Austro-Antarctic yeah. is a really old tool. It's Like I say, it's got practically no interior. It's just a couple of planks. It's only six ninety nine. So even though I was thinking, oh, do we really want to see an antique tool of that back? They brought it back, but they priced it just so right for what it is. Which um, one's that? Sorry, the, the Oster Antarctic, the vintage classic. Yeah, and the the um, uh, Fokker DR one and Bristol Fighter. That's only ten ninety nine for, for again for two rather crude old kits. Six ninety nine, but it's priced so right for what they are. Like that, yeah. that is really impressive. So. I'm never. A, I like what they do with the vintage classics. They don't really appeal to me unless the price is right, and it absolutely is right. I still yeah. won't buy the Buffalo. It's still a bit naff. But... Not me. Me pre-ordering five kits. No way. <laughs> <laughs> that's really so impressive. Yeah. The, the box yeah. arts are looking really good this this year as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm it's not sure I, I would want to pay 97 quid for uh, you know a 70s tool and of a, a Ju87 though. I'm not gonna lie. But it's a, it is a good tool in though, isn't it? It was. It's yeah, cool. it is. I mean, I, I have seen it before. I'm pre and I've seen other people do it, and it does look a really good tool. And but still, you know, 1970s. It is also bloody big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thing is, though, how often has it been used? Are the tooling still great? Are we going to get lots of flash and chaff I mean, and stuff that we don't want on there? What what quality if, is the kit going to be? And you don't know until you've shelled out 97 quid already, do you? So, but if all the other vintage classics are anything to go by, it'll be amazing because yeah. they, they've all been so clean. I've been shook by how clean they are. We will know because Moz is going to buy one and unbox it, and then everyone will be able to. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. Don't tempt me. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a hella, uh, Humbro as, as if we need to tempt sale. you. <laughs> yeah, I've, got, I've got a Humber, uh, a Humber 3D printer here for sale for 200 quid if you want it. The other one that got me was the Bristol Bloodhound. How many times have you oh, seen yeah. people say that? I've you wanted know? one of them for so long. They're, and they're not they're cheap on eBay so either, are they? No, they're disgusting. There'll be people there who sell on eBay crying now, wouldn't they? Yeah. There's, like, there's four. Uh, the Bond bug went for mega bucks. We saw a chat, you know, that went for mega bucks. Um, the fairy Rotterdine, which I've got one upstairs, and I looked at it, thought, hmm, put it back in the box, you know. Um, so yeah, the Bristol Bloodhound's another one that's uh, got uh, um, some value to it. I mean, Bruce currently on e currently on eBay, the only one I can find of the Bloodhound is forty two pound. Yeah, wow, oh. it's four times yeah. the price. It's mad. Yeah, yeah. And it was last out in 2008, so not that long ago. No. Least relatively. <laughs> yeah, Taboli goes, is written there. Uh, all those stash hoarders have lost their pensions. <laughs> 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 well, you're supposed to make them. They're kits to be made. Exactly. I hobby M style from Russia. Nice to see you, my friend. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I see the Vision Classics as for people who boot them as kits and want another go at it. And for pure nostalgia, of course. For what seems simpler times, yeah, I get that as well, John Ashley Smith. <laughs> um, Eddie Birdie is put 97 is still 97 pounds. Agreed, yeah. Eddie. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, we're seeing the, the new tool and 24th scale ones at that price, which, you yeah. know, I would pay for a new tool Spitfire Mark 9, but for a 70s tool and a, a J87, nah. Give, no, it, um, so. give it a few months, give it like to the end mm -hmm. of the year, and I'm sure that price will come down because they were selling their Hurricane Mark One uh, vintage tooling in 124th scale as part of a bundle, and I got that for like 30 quid. So, yeah, well, um, yeah so just and keep that's an a good kit as well. That's a very good that's kit, all right, yeah. Uh, Hurricane One. So, you got the mystery box as well with the three kits in, and one of them was a uh, Hur Hurricane, like I yeah, did, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I that's guess... why people bought them, yeah, because of that. 
Yeah, that was a good that was a good shout actually. To be fair, yeah, it wasn't so much of a mystery if everyone got the same, but the mm-hmm. value of what you got inside the inside the kit because it was like thirty quid something for the mystery box, and yeah. you got a, a one twenty fourth scale hurricane and a couple of smaller kits, and I'm like, you've you've already got your money back like three times in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Yeah, that's fair. I really enjoyed building that uh, Mark One Hurricane as well. No, that was um, it's it's an old. It's not like super detailed, but there's enough detail to keep you interested, but not to the point where you're going, "Oh God, I've got to finish building this kit." Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, I get that. I do get that. Does the blood was... come with the little trolley and the Land Rover? It came with some stuff, doesn't it? I don't know. Not if it's the la- didn't it come with the Land Rover though, did it? But it's in the I box. It, yeah, we all know about boxer. It comes with some figures, <laughs> though, doesn't it? Yeah. Is it? I might have to Google it. Uh, the Oster Antarctica. We need to find somebody who's built the Bloodhound and see what's in there. Have a look. Um, Apparently there is. It is the Land Rover. Yeah, it was Land Rover and uh, Little German Shepherds. Oh, no, oh yeah. yeah it does. Um, it's just no, the trailer as well. Mm. Yeah. That's what scale was the blood out? 76. 76. It's from their sort of era of making um, ground vehicles and things for railways. So, yeah, got you. 1960 tool. Is there, down, is there a gear down option for the F35B? I assume there would be for the start. I would have thought so, yeah. I can't they're see there they're not being an option for it. Yeah. The trolley, oh, Land Rover launch, the, the trolley yeah. Land Rover launch platform, it's called. I had one sat on the shelf behind the match, I think, in the video, so I'm pretty sure there is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a start kit, isn't it? So it's going to be a wheels-up yeah. uh, um, assembly or a, a separate wheels-down assembly. It's not going to be the same fitting for either. So I'm so excited. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just... Uh, obviously, there was no bear cat, just so you know. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's yeah, fine because they can use you to hype that up for another year now. Another yeah. year now, another two years, twelve please. months. Another, <laughs> another twelve, yeah, another twelve months of me going on about it. Um, but then again, if they did release a bear cat, you would have had twelve months of me going on about the fact that they had released a bear cat. <laughs> you know what I mean? When they um, finally do, they're going to give Moz his own box art for it. <laughs> Put Moz in the pilot seat. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and pilot. Twelve months time, Mod will be bored of the bear cat. It will be onto something else. <laughs> wow, that is heresy. <laughs> no, I've that's been almost like thing. saying you build things that aren't one seventy second. It's just disgusting mm. talk. You know? <laughs> the the catalog is now eight pound ninety nine on the website, ready for order. So, uh, um, which has uh, it has the starter set, uh, the the um, what's it called? Gift the, um, um, gift, gift set, yeah. or whatever set. Yeah. The thingy set. Yeah. The set. Put the, the schemes <laughs> on the website for any of them. Yeah, they're there missing. Are for, yeah, I thought I saw one, but no, there wasn't. Last year they were on there, but this year they're not. Well, yeah. It is for the paddle steamer Great Western because there's only one scheme. <laughs> it's the Great Western. Yeah. That is fantastic. Strange that, isn't it? Yeah, I'm happy to see that back. I'm so happy. Yeah, that. That, I mean, that, that was a nice surprise. I, you know, it's it's an old kit, isn't it? It's a, an old tool, and, and uh, I, when was the last time it was released? Like, not this century, was it? The website said 2006. Ah, oh, okay, so it, it was early this century. So it's been a while. Then it's yeah, and I mean, I would, I would like, like I said, I would like to have seen uh, some more non-military stuff, and I think we got that this year as well with the the cars, the buses, you know, the yeah. the support trucks. Uh, I know they are military, but they're sort of non-combatant, aren't they? So they, I, th- yeah, I think they're civilian as well. Quite yeah. happy with that. And do custom schemes for civilian. On the on the flip side of all this, and I just as I was there looking, I was about to say, and somebody's already mentioned it in the chat. No helicopters this year. No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, there's only. Well, I mean, what's the road well. to dive? Does that count as a helicopter uh, or uh, uh, an auto? Diver, really, what we're talking? It? Yeah, it's not a helicopter, is it? Come on, be fair. It's not a helicopter. <laughs> yeah, it's got a fan on the top there, isn't it? Yeah, it's not a helicopter. World's biggest fan, yeah. It's got it's one of these twirly helicopter. things. Yeah. 
And no, also just air noticed, conditioner. On this on this picture here, have you it's noticed that down there's down no down. there's no um canopy on the e on the on the um <laughs> the lightning there. He's getting ready to eject. Yeah. He's getting ready to eject. <laughs> I mean that's pretty standard with lightning, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just just camouflage. I'll just text Dale and say you're ready to come on. So um he's disappeared off the green room, so uh we could ask him some Magical questions when he comes adventure. back up. Yeah. He's probably there scratching me because the web because the website is really slow at the moment. Well it will be, yeah. Uh, people like, yeah, it's gone people really like me slow. opening every item on a different tab. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so as I said, you know, a good range there for me. As soon as they, you know, you know, we were there looking, it was like, you know, every time it's like normally they have one at the end, don't they? Like one big release at the end, but this time they put the gannet right at the beginning nearly, didn't they? So Yeah. But, um, I did mention, um, oh yeah, there's that truck there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad they pulled that out. Though, being fair, the new box art, it looks very much like the Airfix Club box art, doesn't it? What's that for? The um, the ferret and the uh, the CWT. Oh, just... It looks very much like the, the Airfix Club box art rather than the, you know, the normal red box art. Because Is it's that not, not just art? placeholders? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know. It could well be, but I mean, I just thought it was interesting to note. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, well, yeah, somewhere. <laughs> um, where's the screen? So it's gone, isn't it? Where's it gone to? Um, let's try that again then. Airfix. Airfix model tools. There you go. Obviously, oh, just then. The star re-release is the Bond bug, which has only ever apparently yeah. only been released twice. Yeah, both yeah. in the seventies. Wow. Mm. What was that? The Bond bug. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. So Dale's coming to join us now, hopefully, so we can ask him some questions. Because one of the questions I want to ask is: Is uh, Vintage Classics do they do anything with the tooling? Because when Hella put out their reboxings they were saying that they were um, repairing the tools so uh hopefully they will um repair the tools i think that's go. the standard the practice, isn't it hopefully well we got them oh, both on today oh, look on at that. On. yay the sprue to the sprue, sprue talk studio oh, oh. Well, well, that was short and sweet. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> Did you he press the wrong one? button? Yeah. He's in. Hi, Luke. Hi, Hi Dale. Hi, Dale. Hi, yeah. Really Hello. well, really Hello. well. Um, congratulations. You were, I think, and I think all of us here agree, you've basically blown it out, kicked it right out the park. You know, yeah. I can't say anything more. You've done some phenomenal schemes. You've uh, brought out a tooling with folded wings when we all thought that Heller had done good with their tooling with their folded wings. You've gone even better with one of the most complex wings that could ever be created on a plane, and you've brought that out. And also, uh, the, you know, the Land Rover for the starter set, you've got uh, um, the uh, the Lightning for a starter, for a starter set as well, you know, and that, um ferret thing that that it just looks amazing you've done really really well this year we are ultimately surprised and i think you've done it to be fair for a release yeah thank you yeah i, I mean i don't think it's a, a secret that i've not really always been airfix's biggest fan but the last couple of years it, you've impressed me so much i've gone from having one or two airfix kits to now having about 50 airfix kits so you know, <laughs> I, th I think that's great. This year, you've done a great job. Last year, I was a bit meh because there wasn't really much in there for me. But this year, you know, I'm, I'm going to be spending a lot of money on your website. So <laughs> it's a great job. Well done. Yeah, well done. Mm. What's you. your thoughts on it, Dale? What was your uh, what's your reaction so far with you know the decisions that have been well, made? The, well, I knew what was coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I knew that. Yeah, but, but yeah, but what means is that, wait, wait, in your back of your mind, were you like thinking we, we we're going to do well this year? We've picked some really good kits. Yeah. So um, so Luke and I with Martin um, sort of come up with the range. Luke puts a lot of suggestions together. Then we have to sort of accommodate what we can achieve as a team um, and our suppliers can achieve as well. And um, 
we sort of got to a point quite early last year where um, it all sort of it looked right, didn't it? It felt mm. right. The whole range just felt right. There's a lot of focus on the starter sets, new tool starter sets, which you've seen, the cars, um, just yeah. to sort of, I'm not going to say complete that range, but certainly make it fuller. Yeah. Um, um, the F35, 172nd scale F35 with a shadow stand. Yeah. Um, um, looks pretty cool. And we've not done a modern jet for a long time. Um, mm. So that sits there really well. And then, I mean that gannet. We've we've got test shots of the gannet, which um, came in last week. Yeah, and even the designer hasn't seen them yet. So um, I must admit, Luke was pulling them out of the box, and I was <laughs> I was crawling all over him. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that looks really cool. And the ferret is um, an extra special one, really. It's, so it's yeah. amazing. It was a gap in the market um, when yeah. uh, Eric got suggested. We sort of went, no, that's got to have been done. Um, mm. you start checking, you go, actually, no, nothing in injection molded plastic has been done in well, ever. Yeah, no I one's think. ever done a 135th scale ferret mark two. Uh, so, yeah. um, it was suggested to me as a uh, <laughs> one of those usual conversations that you can imagine we have where I know what you should do, you'll sell loads of them. And uh, I was there going, oh, right, yeah, yeah. And he said ferret mark two, and I, I just thought. Ooh, hang on a minute and then i, I sort of think i messaged luke and just went ferret mark two and um yeah it just um another one of those things that we just had to do i was at the um i, I remember you messaged me i was at the, the Haviland museum at the time i went ferret mark two and I, then i was like oh i'll look it up and then i just i was about half an hour late for my next appointment because i just spent half an hour going yeah we can do that we can do this scheme we can do this um, yeah so it clicked straight away so um yeah it was going away and scanning one and finding loads of examples around the country to, to measure and research. So, yeah, it'll work. Is Academy, by the way, or is that your own um, design tooling? In... F-35? No, the um, the, Gan ferret. the uh, ferret. Oh, it's ours. Ferret's all in-house. All in-house, that one. Okay. Ethan's, Ethan's have we, have we done anything this year with Academy, like, in that way, or is it all in-house? It did miss it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ignored that. You missed that? Yeah, you missed <laughs> that completely, <laughs> Moss. I know, sorry. I'm there reading the comments on here because everyone here in the chat is like really proud of what <laughs> ethics have done today. So, you know, people, no one's really complained at all. They're just saying, you know, all this is coming out and uh, they're really chuffed. And so I expect today you're going to be seeing a lot of credit cards being put into your website. So, <laughs> well, no, no yeah. definitely not. <laughs> so the, so I'm going to ask, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask Dale. Dale, who is the designer of the ferret? <laughs> Ethan. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ethan done it, did he? I just wanted to speak to him and know what he's been working on for ages, and we uh, couldn't mm -hmm. tell him. So, uh, so now he knows. It was actually ah. his very first project. So we threw him in the deep end, um, and then he worked on the Land Rover. And you've got to be careful now. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm trying to work out what we're doing. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> he then worked on the Land Rover. In hindsight, probably should have done it the other way around, but um, it's, he took to it well. Um, it's a steep learning curve, and where well, you can see it's a fantastic model. So uh, he, he's done us proud. Yeah. Oh, Someone yeah. Talked about the F35, actually. And, and I think it's really important to just um, say now that our F35B is. It's, a, it's designed to be a starter set. So um, if there's you know, there's other 72nd uh, scale F35s out there, and um, we've we've not tried to up um, you know detailed comparisons or anything like that. You know that product is designed to be a simple, put together, really enjoyable mm -hmm. build for um, a, a very targeted market. Yeah. Um, but it, it does include. Um, movable exhaust and, and mm. bits and pieces and hatches and stuff but it is a starter set designed um, for the beginner model and just so jump is it gearing up. down then gearing up and gearing down on that one yes yeah yeah and the yeah. shadow stand yeah yeah and there's yeah. um there's two different um prongs um for that as well, <laughs> so you, you, uh, different angles yes. yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. Uh, um, the angle of the dangle yeah there's two angles of the dangles with that so you can yeah um, can put it so it's hovering if you like or just flying straight yeah. or, or there's one where it's on the lean 
So I'm yeah. so hyped for that. To another one of the questions there that Gamut was uh, Paramjit himself on that one. Uh, right. We're talking okay. about who designed what. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. If I could yeah. just um, sorry, if I could just yeah, good job, Are the um, are there different schemes going to come on the website at some point? Because I'd really like to have like a look at those myself instead of from just the video. Yeah, absolutely. So um, they, we know mo some of them, um, but until mm. uh, until the box art is done our side, we won't put them on the website because Luke is still tweaking stuff and uh, yeah, yeah. last minute changes. So, uh, but yes, as soon as we know um, one hundred percent what they are and uh, no further changes are going to happen, then we'll put them on the website. We've already got three products that we need to put uh, on the site that aren't there now because it was just too much um, for everyone to try and get ready for today. So It's okay, worth right, saying right. those profiles that you see when we were doing the range launch a few minutes ago, um, they're done for catalogue um, to sort of give you a, an inkling of where we're going. And the hope is we keep them. Um, but so the, the actual outlines are quick, rough, put together, get it something so we can show the audience and then they go away and be refined uh, to go into the kit. So the side profiles aren't finalised uh, in outline or in paint scheme. So uh, still some work to be done. Brilliant. Just on that, yeah. um, Gannett. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have, as, uh, That's one. a nice catalogue you got there. Isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. How many parts have the Gannett got? Lots. That's all. <laughs> 300. 300, 327, according to your website. There you go. Yeah, yeah he's on it. <laughs> I knew it was 300 and something. Which is <laughs> absolutely yeah. fantastic for 50 yeah. quid. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned that earlier, didn't we? We said that not only have you got the, the range of different kits and reissues and bits this year, but also the pricing, um, you know, due to the current market circumstances. Was that something you uh, sat down and thought of? Uh, or was it just, you know, as the range has been launched, that's kind of how they were? So, um, so... So obviously we price all our products by series or our classic kits are priced by series. Um, our starter sets, gift sets are um, priced by sort of really what the market uh, needs. Mm. So we try and keep those prices as low as possible um, because they're, uh, we don't want it to be, we don't want price to be a, a barrier to entry um, yeah. for modeling. Um, yeah. So uh, we are not increasing our prices uh, right now, uh, our retail prices, so they all stay the same as they uh, as they were in, de in December, yeah. and that's a that's a number of factors. You know, the the world is changing, but um, some things have, have um, I would say become more in our favour. Um, that's not to say that we're cashing in on that, but we're able to balance more of the range up. So you know, where we would lose margin in some areas, we're able to to gain some in 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 others. So as a as a range. I'm just able to, to keep it balanced. Any of the uh, kits going to be manufactured in the UK this year? Uh, so the Spitfire, 124 Spitfire is still being made. We're still pumping those yeah. out. Um, so, But other than that, uh, no, no current plans. Um, okay, fair enough. No, that's fine. No, just... Uh... Um, it's just interesting. The other question I'd like to ask is, um, we all, we, to do the, before we did this, cause I got this new software. It's a bit funny. Um, we looked, we did a hell of video and um, they were talking about a lot of their old toolings have been repaired, ready for reboxing. Do you go through that stage as well, where you bring out an old tool, send it away, get it repaired, or is it still just straight into the machine and then yeah. um, turn so out? So we do have to evaluate the, the tooling. So it's all very nice. We've got a big list of what we hope to release. Um, mm. So, you know, Bond Bug is a prime example of it. Um, mm. You go, right, Bond Bug will do it if we can find the tooling. Find the tooling, oh, but we haven't got any clear parts. Um, so that's obviously an extreme example where we then have to reverse engineer and create a new tool for those. Um, right. But sometimes you get shots come through of a tooling that you expect to be absolutely fine, um, but you think, actually, that bit's a bit knackered. Um, mm. Or you know you get a, a message from India saying actually no we need to you need to spend this much to repair the tooling if you want to bring this out um, and then we have to do a bit of weighing up to work out right are we going to make the money back if we spend X amount on tooling yeah. um, because there's yeah. less in in vintage classics obviously but um, 
uh, it's always a shame when you have to go actually no the tooling's dead it's beyond economical release really yeah, yeah. so when you guys came down uh, yeah back in june um our vintage classic tools were all on pallets in a separate area of the warehouse yeah and I, uh, that morning i had to get them all moved into all the racking so you didn't you lot didn't walk through the warehouse and go Oh, why have they been pulled out separately? So uh, <laughs> we, have to get him, we have to get them all pushed back in, uh, in into into place, and um, so no one no one knew. <laughs> so, have to keep an eye out for that we, next year, then. Yeah, the, 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 the thing that made me laugh was is that when when we said when I, I remember you saying on one of the Sprue talks was if we've got it on our palette, if we got it in Margate, that means it's not going to be in the in the foreseeable. Made into a vintage classic, you know. The, the, the Rotterdam was there, obviously. I'm sure yeah. it was because I went through. So you must have called that out and banged that into a production quite quick from last year. Well, it's not in production yet. Uh, no, I know. Yeah, we are. Uh, we are in the process of moving some of those tools mm. out to India. So yeah, um, you're not you're not going to see those in the next couple of months. No, I get that. Um, um, but of course, we've only got so many tools here, um, mm. and if we've if the if the product has ever been released under Hornby, Hornby's banner, then of course the tools are already in India or in the Far East. So yeah, um, yeah. no, no, because that was one of the other things was is that they're releasing a, a tool in Hellera, and um, originally it was an F. First off, it was FX, so that must have been one tool that got got away when the when the when it, the separation happened between Heller and. Uh, ethics if you know what it, i mean it was a it was a messy divorce in some ways when you're yeah. at the bank of tooling you're trying to work out well why do we have that and why don't we have mm. to, to release um yeah and trying to decipher some of these lists is quite difficult but um we yeah. are where yeah. we are you, you also, yeah, basically so, basically who got who got the wedding bedding and the and the knives mm -hmm. and forks and spoons isn't it really in yeah, the divorce it, was, it would have been really difficult commercially to decide who paid for tooling and who paid for design so yeah maybe that's one that um, it was a bit, yeah, as Luke said, a bit messy. And um, mm. we felt at the time, which is going back quite a number of years, that it, it wasn't worth fighting for. So, yeah, I get that. Yeah, they're not fighting for, definitely. Um, but yeah, wow. So, anyways, any other questions in the chat? You got your opportunity now. If you want to ask Dale a question, I'll put it up for them um not really much here at the moment i think people are just still on the website buying the kits so yeah. <laughs> which is good for you seeing you know i think pre-orders gauge on what you what you get in i guess uh when you finally get them brought into the country yeah so um don't really know what you just asked there but in, in terms of <laughs> no, what i meant is, is oh, sorry what i meant is that say say like you, you will gauge on how many kits you're going to order from the manufacturers to you, if you see what I mean. Yeah. By so how many you get pre-ordered? Yeah. So our um, our range planning is bizarrely um, done in financial year, which is March to April, not calendar year. Okay. So um, we've already got products out in the Far East that we've hit the button on um, that will be here uh, before the end of March, namely um, the Dan Buster anniversary stuff, because obviously the anniversary for that is the uh, beginning of May. So mm. we need to make sure that we get that in as soon as possible. Um, yeah. uh, we obviously, during the live premiere of the video today, we're watching how many people are uh, currently watching the video and it, I think it went over 1500 wow people. um and then uh, the web team are looking at how many people are live on the site and um uh, we beat all the brands today Good. so um so well brand thank you everyone <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, even hella even even hornby yeah. sorry you beat hornby's yeah. wow the pre-orders wow. so um uh, yeah. Over the next 24 hours, we will um, uh, monitor pre-orders on our website. But then, obviously, we've got a couple of weeks of uh, taken orders from from the trade as well. Um, so there is a bit of there is a bit of play um, where we can um, uh, massage the numbers with our suppliers to make sure yeah. that we're, we're getting that right. And um, mm. um, touch wood, we you know we 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 got it pretty well nailed last year. Um, so uh, I'm pretty confident that we've, we've, we've got it all right this year. 
and will all the releases hopefully be done this year all the new tooling and that that will all be released sometime this year yeah, we wouldn't Bloody be announcing it otherwise. Otherwise. <laughs> that's not true no 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 because like i said well. katie was 18 months it's only an hour it's only been an hour <laughs> <laughs> i was waiting for the katie for a long time and i'm still waiting yeah, for that scammer lorry to be fair you know what i mean so yeah well yeah. um there's but you know, we got a free glass for a trouble, so it's okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and a poster yeah. for the Spitfire. Yeah, yeah. Um, question in the chat was the the DB5 is that available right hand and left hand drive? Also, how do the wire wheels compare to last year's Jaguar E Type? So it's uh, right hand drive, um, so UK, um, yeah. and its wire wheels are based off of the Jaguars. They took inspiration from the way they were designed. So they'll be similar, but obviously DB5 Easy. style, not E-type style. Yeah. Um, there's obviously certain limitations to what we can do in plastic. They are tiny at 43rd scale. So there's minimum oh. thicknesses, which means trying to replicate a you know, two mil bit of wire is um, really quite difficult and you <laughs> yeah. achieve the same visual effect. Mm. Um, but obviously aftermarket resin can can do the job um but you know for for who it's designed for and most people um, those spoke wheels are pretty impressive when they're painted up yeah fair enough chris harrison says i have a mint sam kit lost mode can you reverse engineer from it <laughs> uh yes um, is the technical well question. yeah i mean we could do but in in all honesty if we wanted to do it we would just start again so um yeah we, we only reverse engineer the clear parts um purely because you're trying to match it to a base kit so um you wouldn't want to start from fresh with clear parts because you wouldn't be able to match it to the base kit so um that's what we've had to do. And for the uh, Oster Antarctic, then, of course, the majority of that kit is held up by the clear parts. So it's really important <laughs> to get that right. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember remember that kit back in the day either. That's uh... Oh, it's a, it's a lovely, uh, what you would call a mojo build. Yeah. Just, uh, throw it together in an afternoon. It's nice. I'm so um... glad that's been released. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which, oh, gan uh, which gannets did we use, Luke? Uh, where are we? Oh, oh, for asked. for uh, research, which ones didn't we use? Is the, the, the answer really? Um, mm. I've travelled the country, so uh, we used uh, right. Let me get this right. We went to Woodley, so the uh, Museum of Berkshire Aviation. That's T five. Um, we went to Duxford to look at their ECM six. We had photos from Ulster and their rebuild, um, which is actually going to be our A scheme. Um, Goodness, trying to remember who else we we visited a couple AEW threes just to compare the other mark um, and quickly realise it's not even worth looking at to to try and cross kit and, and get a variant out. They're just different aircraft. Um, okay. There's some uh, in a random garden, wasn't there? Didn't you go and see one in some? I'm trying to remember, it's that long ago now. Uh, no, but the one that uh, Berkshire Aviation's out the front, um, and they're doing a bit of work, so it looked a bit. Messy. We had the T5 from the States that were flying up until recently. We had their manuals sent over to us, um, which was quite nice. Uh, we went to the Fleet Air Arm Museum, took a few photos there. And the Westlands um, sent us some lovely manuals as well and some photos. So they were very helpful. Uh, so it's basically, if it had a gannet, we went there. <laughs> yeah, cool. The only and question, Sorry, the only one we didn't visit was the one that was at White Wolfen, which was our clue that we gave out. Um, but that was in a bit of a sorry state uh, until recently when it went to Solway and you know they've done a fantastic job. So that was what the photo you guys were looking at yesterday, which was making me laugh so much. <laughs> <laughs> I thought yeah. we came close. I managed to get you to that photo upside down, Moz. That was brilliant. <laughs> I was on my head. Yeah, I was looking, trying to find it, but no. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, it's this banter in it. It's all good. But at the end of the day, I think um, when you put things like that out, it does it does uh, make us interested because it did. You know, as soon as I don't think yeah. many people saw that picture on Twitter, but as soon as I put it up there, the chat went a little bit crazy by, and they were all saying, oh, it's got to be a gannet. It's got to be this. It's got to be that. People did know. And then we got a link because I thought it was one of an original shot. And then somebody said, that's been Photoshop because the original was on Wikipedia. So we looked at it and it was a colored one. And uh, 
but it's the way people were like saying, "Oh, what's that shadow under the pen?" and things like that. It's like, oh, come on, you well, know. It's the, like the thing that you... people linked with White Waltham as well um, was, and this is sort of why we picked it because it wasn't like right, it'll be Gannet. Yeah. As soon as you get it, you know it's Gannet. Um, Wasp and Scout were heavily involved with White Waltham as well, yeah. so. Um, you know, we thought we'd send people down the rabbit hole there. Uh, also, Rotodyne. So we two two hits really. Um, but, yeah, um, but there was also I, I, a, 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 lots of others that flew from there. So, um, so we basically, you were just there. you were just messing with us. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, also yeah. giving a hint. Basically. We weren't lying. <laughs> Yeah, well, you can look over because I went through the whole of Twitter um, on what Airfix had put out there on Twitter, looking at ideas, and I still chuckle at the fact I got, I think it was Brook to, I uh, Rick Road Brook by putting a picture of a sprue of a bear cat and then linked to Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up on YouTube <laughs> and get the response. Why do we click that link? <laughs> no, no bear cat this year, so maybe next year, eh, Dale? Keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to keep on trolling you on it, Moz. So, uh... That's, that's not know. a no. Uh, uh, just to answer one question I see uh, regarding the yeah. Gannet, um, someone said, did you go to the Yorkshire Air Museum's uh, Gannet? And, and there was a rumour going around on Brick Modeler, and this is where it started. Apparently, we've been sniffing around Elvington. I've not been to Elvington. Um, <laughs> so I don't know where the rumour came from. And obviously, they have an AEW3, and we didn't do an AEW3. So... The rumour came from nowhere, but everyone then got convinced that we were going to do a gannet. So it's weird how these things work out. Yeah. That's Sorry. it. You put, you, yeah. That's what I mean. That when You put the video up of the bear cat on your Twitter feed. Everybody tagged me in it, you know, saying, oh, they're going to release us. Nah, I doubt it. I've already suggested it last year. So, you know, and you, you basically are working on stuff four years in advance, aren't you, Luke? That's your thing. Yeah. yeah well, so that no. I've been researching... Three years ahead. <laughs> 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 yeah, the we're nearly, we're nearly broken. <laughs> <laughs> we're nearly broken. Yeah, quickly. Yeah, it's uh, difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. Well, and I think and then when we come on things like this, and you're talking about the releases that you've just announced, I was working on that a year, two years ago. So yeah. you're trying to remember. What what you research, you went into so much depth, and and it quickly passes. You know, it gets pushed out by the other stuff you're researching. Yeah, well, they, that's what Brooke do. said. Chief, that's the way the office is set up because Brooke isn't involved in anything future. She's at the end of the line for the, the current releases, so she, you know, yeah. she's in the best position then to talk about what's happening to the now, while you guys in the background are working on stuff two or three years in advance. So. Yeah, I can see how difficult it can be coming on these sort of things and not slipping that you know that of a of a product that's in the range. You know, but, yeah, you are more you are more tight than Apple when it comes to releasing. Nobody's got any information. You know I what I mean? That, no. <laughs> the um, um, uh, Stu, well, uh, how you doing? Uh, yeah, baby's really good, thank you. Um, Brooke, um, I still haven't presented the range to her, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, would you, I actually said to her this morning, do, do you want to go down to the showroom and we'll come over the range? And she, she said, no, no, I think I've watched your video enough now. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I mean, she always is asking you, yeah. Luke, um, for stuff, which is great. So, but yeah. yeah, you're right. She is pretty much the only, uh, one of the few people in the office that um, has her head in the sort of now, if you like. Yeah. Um, whereas we're all um, 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 sort of looking at uh, a year or two uh, ahead, so yeah. yeah, good fun. Fair but... enough. I'll, yeah, it's 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 brilliant, mate. Honestly, I'm really chuffed for FX this year. I, I as you know, but I am a. I, I look at FX through pink or rose tinted glasses. Anyway, they can do no wrong. But I think uh, <laughs> a lot of people. It's true, you know. But a lot of people um, are impressed. I'm as I said. I'm just waiting now to go onto the website and spend. I've cleared my credit card ready. And this year, my credit card is two years in date. So unless something catastrophe goes wrong with that, I should be able to pay for it on the day it gets released. Like, you know, so have you got just just in, in time frames before you go, 
what sort of time frames have you got on these kits? Is there like kits going to be released in March, April, May? Is there anything you've yeah, got Yeah, so uh, I don't have that right in front of me, but um, at two o'clock today, I had a uh, purchasing meeting and mm. we've got uh, things like the Dan Busters gift set, the um, Then and Now Spitfire F35 and the um, 35 starter set um, are all being, or planned for release in March. So... Um, yeah, and then and then we've got some other stuff coming in. All the other stuff will come in after, but that stuff is is definitely planned for for March. What's being what's being released at uh, the Hurricane event then in uh, on Saturday? <laughs> oh, one twenty four scale Hurricane, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> people are like, "Quick, buy tickets! Quick, buy tickets!" <laughs> no, you you said in the uh, end of year uh, review that you were not releasing anything at the Hurricane event, though, didn't you? No, yeah, so no. Um, when we were approached by Dutchford uh, the other year, not last year, year before, about their Spitfire mm. get-together, um, I went up there and sort of met them and went through all of that, and uh, I came back and was talking to Luke and uh, Martin Ridge, uh, my counterpart, and um, Luke just said, why don't you launch a big Spitfire there? And I just thought, well, yeah. And um, I was mm. quite fresh back into the business at, at, at that point, so it all yeah. sort of just... Um, tied in quite nicely you know we didn't design a 124 scale spitfire because they were uh, they gave us two months notice on a, a special <laughs> exhibition that they were running and um, mm -hmm. we, i've known for a long time that they were doing the hurricane uh, exhibition but um certainly are not enough mm -hmm. time for us to do a 124 scale hurricane mm -hmm. um not that you know that's necessarily on our on our list of, of things to do mm -hmm. um, yeah, anyway so yeah there's always a very there was very few i don't see i don't think there's any spitfire really in the in the range launch yeah. this year was there mark, mark five there was one mark five. yeah mark five. So the, the 172nd scale mark five classic kit has had a, mm. uh, a relivery relivery yeah. um and it just uses um parts from the kit that were already in there so the clip wing um and sort of mm. doing the the opposite to what the initial release was which was sort of um Italy, Africa, tropical filters. Um, sort of wanted to show to people that no, you can do home front, you know, Europe theatre. Um, yeah. And that's why the box front is a clip wing Spitfire escorting B17s across the channel because it, it shows that those parts are actually yeah. in the and that's what differentiates it from the start set in some ways. Good. Um, yeah. just, I saw a, a question up the top there from Modeling mm. Weekly, I think it was, um, about visiting museums. Uh, it's a gamble, uh, is, is the honest answer when we look at uh, aircraft. Uh, you have to obviously <laughs> impress on them, we want to keep this secret, um, but if there's a volunteer that, that wants to say something, they will, and you just have to hope that people don't listen to them. Uh, there's enough people that say, oh, well, I saw airfix here, that, uh, you know, the ones that are actually telling the truth get don't get listened to. <laughs> so, <laughs> the other thing to bear in mind with that is that Luke scans and researches stuff for um, Corky as well. So yeah. um, just because you might see Luke sniffing around something doesn't necessarily mean it's got anything to do with Airfix. So, um, um, yeah. Uh, a couple of other comments. Do you mind me calling out? Something? Yeah, crack on, mate. Crack on, yeah. Uh, Airfix, do you... Um, do you you will do kits for the club members like years ago. Uh, we It makes it really difficult to um, bring out special club kits in addition to the annual kit and focus on our core range. So there's no plans to do special club kits at the moment. Um, I'd much rather release everything that we've just announced uh, in the year that we intend mm. to than do um, the odd the odd kit here and there that uh, just gets in the way, really. But uh, we, we do look at club kits, it's a more recent thing. If you look at the FR9, trying to give club members something a bit more than just a different decal scheme. You know, the, the FR9 is obviously an exclusive this year for club members. So it's the first time that we've done that in a long time. Um, mm -hmm. um, previously, it's been an um, existing base kit with some special decal options. Um, it is an FR9 that isn't in our range this year. So if you want an FR9 in those markings, you can only get it if you sign up to the club. And, of course, you get all the benefits with that as well. So I uh, highly urge you to, if you want an FR9, don't wait around for anything to come out this year unless you wait, uh, sign up for the club. Yeah. Um, um, question I, go on. Sorry, a uh, quick question yeah. I've got for you two guys is, um, obviously, before the launch, we were talking about what we might think, might think it is or not and all the rest of it. Um 
and we were one of the things we were discussing was the two seater Spitfire. Now, I, I, I have my own opinion on it, but I just wonder what were your thoughts on that? Would, would that be something in which you might do, or would potentially consider? I mean, you're not going to tell me you, it's it's being made already, yeah, but you know what I mean. It's coming out tomorrow. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got a special. <laughs> uh, it's definitely something that's come up on uh, my radar, and you know. Two seater Spitfires, there's so many of them now. Um, and you know, when we're researching, say the 24th scale kit, if you're going to view a single seater, chances are they're operating two seaters and they want you to make a model of it. So, you know, we have close ties with Arco, uh, Spitfires.com, and uh, Big and Hill, and they're always on at us about they're, doing they're, it. Yeah, they really want us to do their two seater Spitfires. Mm. Um, I, I guess uh, my hesitation with it is. Uh, you are likely to want to model the two-seater Spitfire that is local to you, or that you've had the you know pleasure of um, flying in. Um, so decal options, we, we can't do a hundred decal options. Um, we would have to uh, upset one operator, or um, all but one operator, should I say? So, um, and even the the two-seater Spitfires are different from each other. Um, so, um, so yeah, never say never. It, but it is something that we are uh, um, being asked for more frequently. So, and of course, we, the... scanned, we scanned one for Corgi, but that that cuts out the bag as well. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Moss Moss was just just talking about it earlier and just saying that it'd be quite easy because you could just fit a little bit behind the other one. Yeah, it's it's not so easy. Hard. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a, a a question. I mean, this range obviously in particular, but but all ranges. Um, when you're adding new decal options, new schemes to existing classic range kits. How do you decide how many to do? Like, is it based on what you've got in the warehouse? It's like, oh, look, we're running low on Spitfire Mark Vs. Ne next year will be a good time to put a new range in. Or is there more thought to it than that? There's, there's more thought to it than that. So uh, Spitfire is an easy one. Uh, yeah, we are always going to have Spitfires in our range. Um, I will always buy them. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, and the um, Mark 5C Classic kit um, has only been released once uh, with its uh, current schemes. So uh, it was time to give it a refresh. Now, that doesn't mean that we um, sold out of the original kit in our warehouse. Uh, that just means we're going to phase a new one um, through the business. Um, and then you won't be able to buy um, uh, the A uh, version um, later in the year as soon as we sell sell it through. But you then have other kits. Uh, perhaps the, um, the Buccaneer isn't a good example because uh, we seem to constantly have 70 second Buccaneers in the range. Um, but yeah. there are other kits where we will um, uh, rest it for a couple of years or, or more um, and then bring it back with new schemes. So mm. we can't just continue to, um, I'm going to say, pop the same plastic into the marketplace with the same decal options because eventually the kit sales just die off. And we're left with a, a warehouse full of uh, the same product, but no one wants it anymore. And if we um, if we change the decal option on it, we're still not going to get the the numbers that we need on it. So we'd much rather kill it, uh, wait a good few years. Uh, we listen to uh, the community, and um, eventually people start shouting loud enough that we think, yeah, we, it's time to bring it back in. So uh, there's there's a number of uh, factors uh, we need to consider. Even this year, there were things. Um, like the Spitfire, there's a couple of other things. Uh, the, uh, NAT, isn't there? the the NAT is just a straight reissue. We've not changed the schemes, but it's really difficult to find decent <laughs> new schemes for the NAT. Um, the Lancaster um, B3 in the classic range. Yeah, we've got a, a, a B3 special in, in last year's range. So I've still got stock of that, and um, I need to manage that existing stock through uh, before we bring the new one in time for the anniversary. So it's just a bit of juggling, really. And the mystery bundles. Oh, you said the two words again. I'm gonna to have to go and buy some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just um, one other question, Dale. You keep mentioning classic kit. Um, that doesn't mean vintage classic. That's the like a full build. So you have classic kit now, and you also have starter set kit. Is that how you now different differentiate between? the kits so to speak well yeah we always have done internally so um uh, if you like we've got four so you've got quick build where well, that's on its own that's fine um, um 
gift sets as a range. And then within that gift set range, you have starter sets, hanging box sets, and gift sets. Yeah, dog, um, dog fight doubles. Yep. Yeah, um, starter sets and hanging gift sets are obviously defined by design for the beginner. That's now starter yeah. set um, and all new tooling. Um, and then hanging gift sets is sort of the, the legacy range that we're sort of working uh, uh, with. Um, so you've got gift sets as, a, as an overall within some subcategories. And then you've got yeah. classic kits, um, which is, uh, if you like, the enthusiast-led range. Uh, and then vintage classic. So classic kits mm. and then vintage classics. Right, okay. Yeah, there's so some I think I was watching your thing about it and you were mentioning about classic and, and um vintage classic. Uh so start set. So just to um you know reiterate that the classic set is basically a kit that uh um has everything in it basically. Um and obviously new tools and new new modes as well. It doesn't mean it's an old kit, it's just uh, a way of a terminology of it. So So yeah, so just a yeah. um, um, classic kit just has the plastic, the decals, the instruction sheet in it. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. it has your paints, glues, and everything else. So um, mm. even with our classic range, I'm not going to say it, it's a new tool, but it'd be a Hornby era tool. Yeah. For certain. And of course, on the on every uh, one of our boxes, certainly the last few years, by the barcode, you'll have the um, the date that it was um, tooled and released. Um, yeah. I th- so we do that very- as well as our vintage classic range that says first released. Yeah, that's very welcomed into uh, the scale modeling fraternity. Anyway, we we do appreciate that the it, it, you can yeah. see the the age of the kit on the side of the box. It's a really good uh, addition to the box art. So, well, I think that's almost it. It's cool. I've been I've been on here for nearly three hours. Oh, yeah, 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 I love it. yeah crumbs. Love you, boys. What, what do you want to say, Luke? No, I was just going <laughs> to say I, there's just a few last questions coming up on that chat. I yeah, don't know if you want to do a quick fire round, yeah. bring them up, and we'll answer them. Get them out of the way. You just bring yeah. them up, Moz, and we'll answer them. Go on. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, I am wondering why the manufacturers are obsessed with the big scales lately. Uh, well, we wouldn't say we are. Uh, we, as Airfix, we try to. Uh, we've got quite a broad range, um, so we're constantly trying to appease many. Um, we don't just focus on one scale, and that that presents its challenges. You know, a lot of people are asking for uh, one six hundred scale ships, and um, you know, we just we just can never quite get to it. And commercially, there's a there's a reason for that as well. So that's mm. that's why. Brilliant. Question for Dale, if possible. This is the first time I've heard about clear parts being reversed for vintage classic releases. Was this the first time Airfix a trend for the future? I hope so. Uh, it's not the first time. No. Uh, what kits did we do that? Uh, on? Beagle Bassett was the first one we did it on. Oh. Uh, so Beagle Bassett. There's a blog that Michael Clegg wrote up uh, with Matt talking about how he did it, um, and, and that was the first time. So it gone missing between us releasing in 2016 as a kit starter um, and this vintage classic release. Um, but it's definitely something, since we've done the Beagle Bassett, um, we know we have the capability and if the demand's there for the for the release, then we'll do it. Obviously, it means we're investing money, whereas normally we'd just be able to, you know, pop the tool in the mold, you know, in the molding machine and get some samples off. Um, so we have to make sure we're going to make our money back. Um, but, you know, in the case of Beagle Bassett, Bond Bug, we obviously see that we'll be able to, use that tooling again in the future at some point okay go back uh, and read the um go back and read the blog on our website it's, it's a very interesting read do you take into consideration the kits that people would like to see or are the kits produced just based on someone's decision yeah <laughs> we do read opinions yeah uh, we, but we can't accept everyone so there's always a, a load of people that go why didn't you use our suggestion there's just too many of them um and you know we're working years ahead so we do look at what people want um and if it's on a wish list uh you know that that does sometimes spur a bit of research on my side and and sometimes they get through at some point you know every kit we've made has been suggested so uh, we just say we listen to that suggestion every time we've had a lot of suggestions <laughs> for the 148 scale gannet in the last six months or so and yeah we sit there looking at it going yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Try not to smile. So whenever we ask on social media, um, uh, you know, what are your kit suggestions? We log all of that stuff and uh, we review it all. So it is really helpful. We're not just doing it to boast, uh, to boost posts or anything like that. We we genuinely do use that data. So thank you for that. So um, <laughs> so so you have 
take into consideration a bear cat then. <laughs> <laughs> we don't listen to every suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear me roll my eyes then? <laughs> I nearly sent you a photo, Moz, of a post-it note and a catalogue saying bear cat on it earlier, but um, no. No. Oh, you trolling you, honestly. Well, that, that, that's as I say, you know, Luke got me good and proper that time when I said, Have you thought about doing a bear cat yet? And you took a picture of yourself right next to one at Duxford. What do you mean, this so bad? You know what I mean? That was brilliant. Imagine if I had a 3D scanner in that picture, you might have wet yourself. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Crumbs, crumbs. I would have, I would have melted. I would have melted, definitely. Um, Ozzy writes, do you try and have a variety of cars, planes, helicopters, and ships in every range, or does it just depend on what kits have been chosen that year? So we're always looking for a broad range. Um, uh, we are restricted, if you like, by our catalogue of existing tools, moulds, um, mm. and then, of course, we, are, uh, we have to consider um, what design time resource we have available. And, you know, should we design a one three fiftieth scale um elizabeth class carrier over a 124 scale spitfire no <laughs> it's the honest answer i'm yeah. going to make more money on a 124 scale spitfire and commercially you know we have to make that uh that that choice but also looking at our retailers they always they want a broad range of, of products not necessarily all military uh, either so um we're always looking to tick quite a number of boxes which is which is why it's it's it can be quite difficult and we can't um please everyone fair enough i get that indeed uh somebody mentioned about ipms national show in ireland show yeah i'd love Don't to forget. come off uh, uh, come over me and luke both quite like guinness and i hope that's not <laughs> stereotyping too much but we do so uh yeah we look, look forward to it you're looking over that one um just uh um, any plans for new mystery boxes? So the mystery boxes, uh, the aircraft one and, and the uh, tank bundle um, are regularly being updated. So um, how much so? I, I'm not actually don't get involved in that part. I come up mm. with other bundles, but um, I sort of leave the mystery ones alone, to be perfectly yeah. honest. But they are being updated. Um, interesting question here, which I was going to ask you about actually, because one of the things that is lacking is helicopters in the range, apart as well as well as motorbikes. To be fair, but um, is this something you're looking at into the future of um, bringing out more helicopters into the range? Personally, I know I, you're a fan of them, Luke, aren't you? To be fair, you like a good old I, helicopter. I like don't you? Yeah, we. I I really like helicopters as well. Um, uh, yes, we'd love to bring more helicopters out in the range. We've got, we have, of course, got the Navy links in the range from forty-eight scale. We brought that back late last year. Um, um, but other than that, and some Sea Kings in the starter set or hanging gift set range and classic, there isn't much else kicking around. So it 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 really um, it depends on numbers and volumes, and you know, can we? And resource, you know, I've got to weigh that up all the time. But we we would like to add more to it. It's just got to be the right fit for us at the right time. In in all, yeah. fair enough. Just uh, saw someone say, "Why doesn't Airfix come to local museums?" Oh, but we do. We just you just don't hear about it. That's I'm good at my job. He's got a, <laughs> he doesn't have a big red balloon saying Airfix on tied to his when he's walking around. So, what are we going to be um, looking out for uh, when we watch uh, Hornby? A modeling world coming up in the next four or five weeks. Is there a we haven't seen it, but we've been part of the filming, which has been wonderful. <laughs> um, um, so we've got two episodes. Um, one is 124 scale Spitfire. So you, uh, the cameras follow Chris around mainly, the designer of the Spit, and uh, the other one is Poundjet and the 48 scale Buccaneer. So nothing, nothing new. Um, um, unless, of course, we've left something in the background, which we shouldn't have done. So, um, which is entirely, which is entirely <laughs> possible. Um, we, uh, I think Brooke took a photo of one of the designer's desks last year and um, and said, is that okay? And I looked at the, the, the photo and it had been cleared of most stuff, apart from some propellers for something. And I was like, uh, are they for such and such? Yeah. I think you need to take those off your desk. So, um, or some reference books. So, um, which is why we never have visitors upstairs because um, 
in our office. Everyone has to clear all their desks, and it's so hard to hide stuff everything. Every, everywhere. So, um, uh, yeah. yeah. So that that's, must have that's been, what we yeah. got to look out for. But um, Okay. Did you actually have a, was it an experience then to be filmed in for the Modelu show? Yeah, an experience. <laughs> we won't go into it anymore. It was an experience. <laughs> yeah. I'm not looking forward to uh, our episodes going live. It's it's well, it's banned in my house just because I can't stand watching myself. Uh, I was looking forward to. I, was, I, 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 said to myself, I said to myself I wasn't going to watch it last night. Yeah, and then I did, <laughs> at, five, at five to eight, I was running through to record it on the skybox. I was like, "What's this?" Yeah, got pulled, so, didn't it? Yeah, it got pulled. So, um, not editorial reasons. Yes, yeah, so it, it had nothing to do with us uh, or Hornby Hobbies. So um, that is uh, that was down to um, uh, the Yesterday Channel, I think it is, and yeah. um, and, and the producers of the series. So um, um, yeah, nothing major, but the, the decision was made last minute, and last minute it was to um, to pull it. So yeah, yeah. One of I was going to say once once Pramajit was on that show. That was the end of him being in the background, really, because everybody knew him at Telford and was pointing him out. So I presume the same of you, Luke. If you go on to that show, everybody will know who you are. Getting to the museums undercover is going to be an absolute nightmare for you, well, mate, I'm going to shave my beard off, get contact <laughs> with you, shave my head, and <laughs> no one will ever notice me. We're, get, we're getting one of those uh, joke fake nose and big ears and glasses. Or so. maybe the fake nose. Simpler than that, just get a Tamiya t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never. Yeah, don't wear me one don't wear that 124 scale ethic t-shirt I gave you. You will be stealing that. I nearly put that on for this, but uh no. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's a great design. Mind you, I'm just saying that my Bearcat design is now live on Redbubble if you want to go and buy it. Okay. Um <laughs> ready for announcements. Make it a kit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it was a kit this year, I'll sew loads of those t-shirts. <laughs> so um oh Solly, this is a good question. Any plans to do the 410 or Japanese stuff from Cosford? Because you don't do a lot of Japanese stuff, so, do you, in the range? Interestingly, uh there was a blog we did a while ago. I d I don't know if it came out on blog, but we we posted about it. We actually scanned all of the war in the air hangar. Um so this just shows how far ahead we work and, and what we what we do. So essentially we came to a deal with the RAF Museum whereby we're going to at some point need to do a 148 for Lincoln or something like that, um, and the data will come in useful. So we scanned the war in the air hangar to help them plan their aircraft movements, and by coincidence, it has the Japanese stuff in. So um, we've got a 3D scan of it, but that's not saying we're doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, uh, that was um, just an opportunity for us to gather a lot of data and, and help some friends out. So, yeah, don't, don't assume <laughs> at all that um, just because we scan something it's it's in the pipeline you know luke, luke runs around the country um scanning stuff just because he can and it might be useful at some point uh, honestly there's the the library and the hard drive for that stuff mm. is is ridiculous so I, and it's not really used for more than just airfix as yeah. well i've um yeah. parked next to stuff quite often so i've scanned my voxel astra so don't expect to see the, the model of it <laughs> but uh you know it just shows that everything we scan we don't make and there was a pigeon in one of my scans so we could bring out a 172nd pigeon so, yeah. Yeah, or, or a bird's nest robbie yeah, bird's four nest. five six our uh, uh, mystery box is just stuff that hasn't sold no not at all no 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 I do always think, to a certain extent, with planes like, I think the Beagle Bassett is the perfect example, Airfix have the ability to make planes more well-known. I don't think I would have, I would know what a Rotodyne is if it wasn't yeah. for Airfix. So I think sometimes, rather than making an obvious plane, you can make a plane more obvious. I, I think this was a conversation the development team have had, um, sort of going back to our roots. And if Airfix didn't make a model of it, um, chances are most people can't name it. Um, and, you know, that's not all down to Airfix, it's model manufacturers, it's stuff that gets covered in TV, print media, everything. Um, mm. But, you know, but an Airfix kit is sort of a litmus test. If if we've made the model of it, it's because it's popular. Um, but if we haven't, it's probably fallen out of everyone's memory, um, especially, you know, 40s and 50s aircraft where everything was being tried. So, yeah, definitely. Um, the Anson last year was as one of those wasn't it I, I've always called the Anson the 4 years ago Anson the, the sort of dark horse um, yeah no one expected that and yet it turned up and everyone's like oh yeah yeah so when you walk past that Anson at Duxford you, you look at it very differently now opposed Definitely. to just ignoring that it's a, 
um, a quite a boring looking um, aircraft, if I can say that, you know, compared to the stuff that it's surrounded by, in fairness. Uh, you know, it's flanked by a Sunderland and uh, a Lancaster with a mosquito hanging from the ceiling and, and a Vulcan and a Vulcan and loads <laughs> of stuff. So you, you sort of, it can be very stuff like that can be very easily dismissed. Um, and then you see the the sort of full scale design of it and all the interior detail, and it, it sort of um, brings it out. So it's nice. I you know because I, I I remember talking um, on another previous chat because you know I have a, a real passion for space. Um, I've, I've mentioned it before, you know, and um, I often think maybe you you have done prototypes in the past of like the TSR, you know, you re-released the vintage classic of the Concorde prototype. Um, surely there's there's space, you know, ideas where you could do a bit of fantasy kit for space, like you know, what would be a Mars rover on the on the on Mars? You know, you could come up with something. And I'm, I would thought that you know, when I was a kid, we built it because it was like the future is this sort of kits or anything you would think of that you would oh why don't we do this particular car even though it's never going to be made it's a really interesting looking thing so, um, do, do you know what i mean so i'm yeah, trying to explain myself better but you know um, I, guess, I guess the way people buy kits now is is different to okay. uh, the way that kits were uh, those decisions were made 20 30 odd years ago so yeah um, there, there are opportunities out there still. The TSR2 uh, is a prime example of that. Um, but in, in all honesty, you know, we wouldn't get the numbers out of uh, out of something that was that was you know, only ever flew once um, versus you know, Gannett, for example. Yeah. You know? So so we we're constantly having to, to to play that. But every now and then something comes through, and we we have to really look at it quite hard and and, mm. and give it some real consideration. But that you know, again. Never say never. Um, mm. I don't think we will ever make anything up. That's not in our nature. Um, you know, we are uh, replicating scale um, um, scale subjects. Um, we've had this debate with uh, Quick Build and, and other um, areas of, of yeah. The you know, our, our our ethos is, you like, is to replicate the real in, in miniature. So, um, yeah, mm. and, and even liveries, people get a bit um, uh, can get a bit funny about. Um, yeah, what if and um, fictitious liveries? I know there's yeah. a lot of people that like it, um, mm. but you're, if we only put two schemes in a what if box, the chances are those people that want to do their schemes uh, won't want to do those schemes. They'll want to go and do their own thing. So, okay, yeah. we get hit sales, but ultimately we won't get the same volumes that we would do if we go and do this real thing over here. So, um, yeah, we're, we're constantly having yeah. to juggle. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, because when I was at Yeovil, there was quite a few <coughs> of the mini art what if kits of back in the day, like, you know, the uh, that one track circular bore that's a tank. Do you know what I mean? You know, thing, people, things like that, you know, when the yeah. vertical takeoff, um, like, 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 a, like a, a plane with rockets on the edge and it just spins yeah. in the air things yeah. like that you know they so there is a market for what if but i, I mm. presume airfix won't really entertain that and the other question I was going to say was with corgi if corgi release uh, a tesla in corgi form would that mean that you would have licensing rights to release a tesla in uh airfix you would have you could probably get the licensing to do it then try and maximize it don't you yeah so yeah. um um if just because they do something doesn't mean that we will do it um yeah but we look at licensing opportunities as a group so um it might be that corgi need us in order to obtain that license um, um because the you don't just sign a contract and that's it you know if you sell some you sell some and you pay pay some royalties there are minimum guarantees yeah so if you don't sell any kits you're still going to pay that um uh that, that uh, license agency or, or company mm. um some quite substantial money so i guess if, if you like the more the more that we could put in that pot uh yeah. wise um um the better for us as a, as a group but um, okay um you know uh corgi have uh, a very strong ford um agreement relationship um and they partner with um skeletric a lot so you know that's a lover string to our bow uh yeah being part of hornby hobbies limited as a group is that we can sort of play off each other a little bit 
Fair enough. Somebody put a question up. What would you do for a plane that hasn't survived, like the Westland Wellwing? Plans only? So, um, you know, the example of this is the, the Whitley. Um, there was no, you know, there's nothing out there for it. Um, and and we, we did it. So it's not something to dissuade us. We'll, we'll still go for it. Um, obviously, it takes a bit more thought um, because you don't want to, do it only by eye and come out and people go that doesn't look like a whitley um so you know it is a risk when there's nothing out there if there's drawings uh we'll do drawings um so you know but the westland um i think the whirlwind's famous for not having much information out there at all uh and i know westland had a flood in their archive so a lot of stuff was lost um so so the whirlwind's a, a tricky one i think there's a project to build a replica and they're really struggling with some of the shapes because it's all done from photos um but you know that's that doesn't mean it won't be accurate or you know close enough it will look like one uh, it's the same with uh you know go 10 years back where we didn't 3d scan it might even be more now 15 years ago um mm. stuff was done by eye a lot of the time um from black and white photos or you know, color photos even, but uh, if it didn't exist, you just try and find as much as you can and you have to evaluate whether the designer thinks it's possible. Um, and I suppose encourage them if you're really desperate to bring it out. Um, but you again, you need to weigh up whether it's worth risking bringing out a product that people might disagree with and you've got no concrete proof to back it up with. Um, so you know a whirlwind would be lovely and that there's other stuff out there um mm. you know manchester gets mentioned mentioned all this all the time <laughs> yeah um and you know one day we might consider it so uh mm. yeah photos is the main route if there's no plans or physical examples we did climb around uh, the lincoln at cosford didn't we we got the keys we were handing the keys for the mm. lincoln at cosford uh just before scale model world not last year years before so there's me, Luke Poundjet. You can't miss Poundjet, of course. Everyone knows him. It was just before the. It was just out during the TV series mm. as well, and um, so you've got all these modellers walking around Cosford because it's the day before Telford, and they're all going, "Why is Airfix in that Lincoln?" <laughs> as, <laughs> as, as, as we're waving from the cockpit <laughs> above them, <laughs> uh, we're in it purely because we can. And, I um, just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, just, I, just, I just googled airfix avro lincoln question mark and then all the forum posts that pop up verifying exactly what you just yeah, said. I mean, it was literally a case of uh, we we managed to yeah. get into the ref cosford side in the morning because we were mega early for a meeting that we had up that way and uh, so they showed us around loads of their tornadoes and jaguars and bits and pieces we got to see some really cool stuff but then we had and then we went over to the museum and um we sort of were bragging a little bit what we've done and they said well we we can't uh we can't have that so uh, we get the keys for the lincoln and you can get in that well, okay then we went in there at aardvark as well didn't we yeah f111 F1 uh um, else i mean let's face it if someone says do you fancy getting in that you, you're not going to turn them down do you so uh, are you so uh, yeah well the keys are probably soon to take off you got the keys right you <laughs> get in it have a little spin <laughs> <laughs> um plans for working with any of the ukrainian manufacturers in the future um if i'm honest no um mm. you know we don't like what we're seeing out there at all but um, mm. um no no i get that i get that i think that's really everything in the chat i don't see uh have Airfix done a OV10 Bronco of not? Have you considered it? I think there's a a, a good Bronco model that's just come out. I think it's OCM. Have they just mm. done a, a, a? Oh, come join us! All right, sorry. Come and come and join us. Will, will. Uh, an extra special guest. Come in the middle. Who's that? <laughs> You're live on YouTube. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> wow, we. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's down to me but the, <laughs> the guys have done a tremendous job today i i I'm, the reason i'm here is the fire alarm has gone off in the panel yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to work out is who set the fire alarm. i thought you were emptying the bins or hoover in the offices or something no it, it, yeah. could, I mean, it could be a clue there fire <laughs> <laughs> so what's been happening oh, today yeah. then anything special I don't know. We, we're, we're disappointed we didn't get to see uh, Hornby and Model World last night. So uh, that's one thing that's a downer. Well, I, I, um, I'm not, we're waiting for an update. But we think, I, I shouldn't say this, but we think it's going to be next Monday now. So Next uh, Monday, is it? Wow. Yeah, 
it was Dale messed up on the dates. Um, <laughs> So it was, it, was down to the, it was down to these guys, to be honest. But uh, it's not the first time they messed up, to be honest, and it won't be the last. Again. So what do, you about, what do you reckon about this range, then? Any good? Oh, we're absolutely Excellent. overjoyed. Amazing. Every single one of us. Are top at, notch. Yeah. Uh, absolutely top notch. I think the, the lads yeah. at Airfix have totally, totally smashed it out of the park this year. They've this gone with year. some phenomenal schemes, because I think that's one of the things we noticed was the... The, the diversity of schemes that you can mm. get for all these models mm. has been fantastic. Mm. I'm still disappointed there's no bear cat, but I'll have a chat with you later about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, well, I, I've, I've said to Dale before he should do it, but he just doesn't listen to me. To <laughs> he does his own thing. But yeah, it's been, it's yeah. been actually great watching the Airfix uh, range over these last few years because um, I sort of got this memory of when I when I came in here at late 2017 and it was early 2018 and uh, Martin Ridge um, opened the cupboard and he said, uh, he's a bit ashamed, he said, we've designed this hell cat but yeah. no one wants to tool it up. And I said, tool it up. And he said, but you don't know how much it costs. And I said, I don't care, tool it up. And he tooled it up, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's been great to watch the range yeah. develop. Um, and, you know, it's taken me a little while to train up Dale. Uh, <laughs> probably another year and he'll be there. I've only known you a year. That's it. Another year. Hey, oh, hey oh, you invited him into this chat. So there's no point. I'm regretting it now. I'm going to be gone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be gone. You I'm know, really nice get on. Um, I've got better. I've got to go and sort the fire. <laughs> <laughs> just quickly, just just, just quickly, just quickly. Yeah. You've now stepped down as CEO. If I'm, if I read my uh, my share price. Uh, yeah, that's before. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any reason why you stepped down? Is it because you lightening your load? Are you like looking? Well, I, at, I, I, I can, I'm, I'm still young, obviously, but um, yeah. I, it's been a hard five years because when I when I joined Hornby, it was um, I, I'd say it was a bit of a car crash, and um, we've done we've changed everything around, put the people in place, and it's sort of like it needs someone else to take the company on the next part of the journey. To be honest, um, and Ollie Rayburn joins us uh, later this month. He's a nice guy, um, and I think he'll do a wonderful job at the company. Um, <laughs> How he's going to manage Dale, goodness only knows. <laughs> and um, I don't think he's had any training with fire alarms either. So <laughs> that would be the first job when he joins us to train him up on fire alarms. But yeah, he'll be joining. Um, I'm still the uh, non-executive chairman. So I, I get to sort of listen to people uh, and tell them what I think. Um, so I'm still here in the background anyway. And as I yeah. say, Dale needs a little bit more training <laughs> as well. So... Uh, I'm going to leave you guys now. And, okay, uh, mate. You Thank you for coming and... on. Thanks yeah, for popping in. Yeah, make sure you give Dale a hard time. Give him a hard time. Uh, what? We, right. can't <laughs> Dale, we can't, we can't, so we can't give Dale well, a hard good. time. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> we can't give Dale a hard time. Drums. I got a pint glass with my Katie, so I'm happy anyway. Well, and. I just wonder if, um, if there's another brand out in the warehouse just burning their 2023 range. <laughs> 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 They're burning our customers before we beat them. <laughs> anyway. Can I just say, honestly, I, you're, like I said, there's, there's, I'm going to be honest, there's no bullshit with, a, with an FX range video. Um, and that's where Hornby kind of get it wrong, because for fifty minutes, I uh, no, for fifty minutes, you just had chat, oh, chat, chat. Just saying, <laughs> just saying. We all, just we saying. all, um, we all um, try our, our hardest, and um, yeah, we all we're all managing our brands um, differently. Yeah, and, and we all have our own challenges as well, and mm. and and that is um, uh, very. Uh, you know, it couldn't be more so between Airfix. You know, our, our products are manufactured in a completely different country yeah. um, to, to Hornby and Scale Electric and, and Dartek Corgi as well. So, um, mm. oh, back. If, if the alarm is beeping, yeah. ignore it, okay? Okay. <laughs> just burn a bit. We we'll just burn a bit. <laughs> brand manager in the warehouse, lighting stuff. Uh, no, so, um, you know, we've we've all got our, as a brand, we've all got our different challenges and, um 
you know, and I, I, I feel for, for the other brands having a hard time in certain areas and, um, and products being leaked. And so it's not nice to see at all. And I, mm. I certainly um, wouldn't want it to happen on, on Airfix. And you know, we've been very fortunate this year that um, uh, that, that didn't happen. And um, we are able to manage things in a slightly different way. So, um, yeah, we're all we are all different. I think you said it earlier, Moz, that um, um, you know, yes, we're Airfix, and um, yes, you know, it's a Skeletric Corgi team and the Hornby Train team, um, but we are Hornby Hobbies as a as a group. Um, umbrella, um, I call it an yeah. umbrella, basically. Yeah, yeah it's just a shame that Hornby Railways and you know that the actual umbrella isn't under like a different name because people assume Hornby Hobbies is trains and you know it's it's a very it's a weird sort of setup but i get that and i do impress that in my videos that you know like you said to me that even though you may do or luke may scan a corgi because i brought it up to you sorry with this with the 143 scale that whether you were going to do a partnership with corgi but you said that even though you may scan the vehicles and everything you do not share cad data between yourselves do you well it's not quite true that's so, what you told uh, me in an email. Yeah, well, <laughs> just feeding you lies, Moz. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 we've got another director. Are you kicking us out? No, I'm with it, oh, I know. He, he did that. See you about the fire alarm panel. Yep, yep. Thanks, Tim. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there really is someone in the warehouse. Yeah. Isn't there? <laughs> um, it's like our parents checking in on us every time. So, so um, the the other brands and the development managers, you know, that we, we we all know roughly what each other are working on, um, you know, in terms of research. And because of those royalty deals, you know, I know if if Corgi are uh, trying to get a Tesla royalty. Um, license or, or whatever they're not yeah. um but so we, we are all aware and we do help each other and um if there's cad data that um one of the team have uh, brands have got that we would find useful in getting us started then of course we will sh we will get hold of it um it will be shared um but um I, I must admit we do like to try and start from scratch where where possible it's never nice taking on someone else's work and i know that through um uh, range presentations and, and bits and pieces you know you never really fully fully get into it unless you you start it and you do it yourself and and i think that's another thing that we um we, we certainly um find it's easier just to give a, a you know the designer um um a blank piece of paper <laughs> we've just seen that hobby <laughs> hobby's brand collaboration a die cash train model kit that runs on a scale electric track <laughs> isn't that what hornby is anyway right moving on <laughs> brilliant brilliant uh sully's just said got to shoot but when you guys come to the museum at cosford next time come and say hello we don't we thank you sully we will do but um luke scanned everything there now so, I don't <laughs> <laughs> so but thank you very much we will do yeah, brilliant. I think that's it now, lads, because it's coming on six o'clock and I need to have a waz because I've actually sat there for three hours now. <laughs> God, I've drunk two litres of uh, of soda water, like you know, and I need to go. So thank well, such you, a Dale. beautiful thank way you, with Luke. words, haven't you? Just, yeah. I, you know, I say it as it is, don't I? You know, so don't, lads, don't, no. just yeah, from my side, don't forget to go and watch that range video without Moz talking over it. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's quite annoying. Um, no, gosh. <laughs> Yeah, go and watch go and watch the range video uh, without anyone talking over it. I just say some key parts in that, and um, yeah. and yeah, thank Matt from my side, thank Luke and, and and the team for making an amazing range this year. And um, mm. you know, go and go on our Facebook page and um, share your opinions. Um, Brooke is busy working on on uh, monitoring all of those and replying where we can. I'll be doing that this evening as well. Um, you know, I'm really looking forward to this year's range. We've got some really exciting stuff coming out. Um, yeah. You know, if you thought the Buccaneer Spitfire and the Anson were amazing um, uh, last year, then uh, wait until you see, you know, the the plastic in the flesh this year. Yeah. So Fair thanks enough, for having man. us on. Yeah, no, thank you, mate. Uh, and I say I did you. mention that in I mentioned that at the beginning of the uh, live stream. I said, look, we are a commentary channel. If you want to watch it without me speaking, <laughs> just watch it. But please come back. <laughs> um, thanks for coming on, Dale um, and uh, Luke, for explaining some things. It's been a pleasure. And everyone else who's been in the live stream, I hope you've had your questions answered. 
again, thanks all, and uh, get your wallets out and go out and buy some uh, <laughs> buy some uh, pre-orders and everything. So, uh, which is good. Anyway, I want to end the stream now. Thanks all for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Cheers, Bye. 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 Bye.